but yeah, let's just delete that bit, shall we? Yeah, I think there's probably a few that we we probably should do the same thing, but that's far yeah. too much hard work. <laughs> yeah, well, we, I can't remember what it was. We went down a rabbit hole once, and it was probably about a forty five minute rabbit hole, and we went, yeah, none of that is broadcastable at all. None of that. <laughs> yeah, we we usually that do is that one of the dangers of being live. Yeah. <laughs> Like we are now. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure a lot of our listeners would prefer us to cut 45 minute chunks out of our podcast most of the time. <laughs> That's half the fun of it, though, isn't it? It's like we say so when, yeah. when, when the cross cut was, we had things that we wanted to talk about, but it was never planned. It was like, oh, well, we'll talk about the woodworking TV show this for, for a bit, and we'll talk yeah. about this, and we'll talk about that. And then half of it is like, we got to the end and stopped recording. It's like, we didn't talk about it. That's really great. <laughs> we'll save that till next week. Uh, yeah, I mean it, it, that happens quite a lot with us as well. Of, of uh, you know, pre-show chat, we'll you know kind of get a feel for what the guests might want to talk about, or if they've got things they want to plug, or you know stuff like that. And then invariably, we just get to the very end, and you know we've we've spent two or three hours chatting about absolute nonsense, not yeah. mentioned it once, and missed the really important thing that we really wanted to talk about. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And you usually end up chatting with the following week's guest about the you know previous week and what we should have talked about then as well. Yeah. yeah. And that a few times. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's always fun. I need I need something I I you know, like you know, his dark materials, they've got this idea of they kind of basically got this little sort of demon that kind of yeah, sits on your shoulder or folds you around. Mm-hmm. And it's just like yeah. I need something like that that kind of then kind of whispers me and goes, Don't forget to ask about their recent trip to wherever or yeah, what that they're doing notes. next <laughs> yeah. no, that's the show notes you have to have written down and pre-prepared though no i need a no. little thing that will prepare me some show notes <laughs> so what, what you're saying is you, and then remember need, to read them out you need like a google glass type thing or like that um that eye mounted piece that i've yep. got and then just feed chat gpt into it to just say <laughs> podcast with Brooksford builds, give me some questions, yeah. and then just get it to feed them straight to your eyeballs. Well, you could just get AI to do that these days. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the chat GPT mm-hmm. would be perfect for that. Mm-hmm. Or like Steve's got and, and get uh, Jamie to do that. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need a production team in a gallery, kind of, yeah. Somebody moving the sound. Yeah. And, yeah the director there with the show notes, kind of, yeah, yeah. talking to your ear. Uh, Andy, you mean yeah. you mean like we have for this podcast the the full production team in the background? I mean, yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, that's exactly what I meant. Yes, yeah. The hair and makeup that we both get before the oh, show. Oh, the makeup was was amazing, actually beautiful yeah. today. It, I mean, it took her about half an hour, but it works. It works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, the green room. Yeah, we've we've gone to a lot of effort with the green room just to make sure. You I mean, you did there. have some fancy snacks in there. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Did you like the way we separated the M&Ms into different colours for different pots? I did. I appreciated that. I, I, I did, did go in. I did sneak in and make sure I could get rid of all the ones with W written on them for you. Yeah, thanks. I, I Yeah, that was <laughs> that was one of the show riders, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, saw, I saw something earlier this week. Uh, yeah, M&Ms have, in America, apparently they've, they've produced some new packets. Mm-hmm. And so they've got some things, and they're looking at kind of, you know, sort of, gender equality and things like that and they're kind of yeah. uh, and sort of and then you get kind of some of the right-wing media who are complaining about kind of yeah you know, the wokeness of everything and yeah they're completely completely falling apart because of some chocolate and it's I know. and they can't I know. it gets ridiculous sometimes god help them if they knew that it was based on our Beautiful British smarties as well. <laughs> well, you wouldn't they, be able to call them smarties. Well, because they, they, they like, one them, of my they can't worry about it, wouldn't they? What they have, they have candy called smarties over there, and they're a little bit like our love hearts. It's kind of oh, like really? a hard, okay. hard, sugary candy thing. Because one of my guilty pleasures on YouTube is seeing other people trying British snacks. Right. Just. Because it's it's me being able to live vicariously without eating all the snacks myself, you know, get get some enjoyment from someone else's enjoyment without me eating yep. the calories. It's the only way of not being bigger than I am. 
Um, so a lot of the Americans who try our Smarties make comments about the, the American Smarties and how they're expecting these like, hard sugared candy mm-hmm. things. And then they're very confused. And then they go, oh, they're just like M&M's. And they try them and then they go, oh, the, the chocolate's better. But do I like M&M's more? Oh, I don't know. And then, yeah, finding out that, that basically the, the British Army used to have Smarties and the Americans went, oh, that, that's a really good idea. We might make some of those. Mm. And that's how M&M's happened. And then because it's American chocolate, it's not as good either as well, like you said. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now, like, so I, love the, a, I love a good crunch bar, but it's not as good as a Cadbury's. I mean, we're allowed. Uh, are we allowed to talk brand sponsors on on, on the show? Or oh, if we if oh, we yeah. get sponsorships from them, absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I'm a Galaxy girl myself, to be fair. But, you know, <laughs> unless we're talking, you know, Milka or uh, Marabo or something or, like that, that's when we get into. Ah, uh, Lint. If you're going to start putting Milka in it, then yeah. Not fast. Yeah. Not fast on Galaxy. I always find Galaxy a bit sickly a bit, for me. Yeah, mm. I, I take Galaxy over uh, Capri, though. So. Tends to be Ooh. a little bit okay, so fattier. How do I, I find log it? off of this? Cap- no. <laughs> Capri's just tastes a bit more like butter to me than chocolate. Mm. I understand uh, that. I, I, uh, yeah. Doesn't well, stop me demolishing an entire bar. Something for everyone, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, uh, Ian, absolutely right. Uh, top of the pile, Gillian shells. Mm. It, but it has to be the full selection of shells, not just the seahorse. Pack the yeah, it's got to be the the full selection of the shells. That's top mm. tier. I used to like them as a kid, but I don't like them as much now. No, my my aunties used to give them to me when I went up into went up to Scotland to visit them, and it was always oh do you want it's like oh yeah because you're offering me chocolate, but if I had a choice, <laughs> you know, now making my own money, I could buy the chocolate I want to buy. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I. Did, I I do quite like uh, Thornton's classic, uh, the um, box of chocolates. That, that's a, a little, you know, if if I feel like I want to treat myself properly. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, nice, that. yeah, nice, yeah. Quite nice in. Good. Get like a Thornton's classic. Yeah, yeah. I do. Prefer, I do prefer the kind of um, the kind of, sort of slightly higher end kind of trays of chocolate than the kind of yeah milk tray. Mm. Yeah, quite like the so You're more a black magic man than a milk tray man. No, 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 I don't like that magic. <laughs> especially as it especially as it's that company that like to think that they can stop people in Africa from breastfeeding by supplying them with milk and then stealing water from people in other parts of the world. Yeah, not a very nice company. Don't go with that company at all. Mm. Um not even gonna mention that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean I, um, <laughs> I I'd no, much rather I have a nice bag of crisps though, to be fair. So Ooh, what flavour then? Mm, oh, anything... Kettle chips, or would you go something? Mm, no, more like corn, corn like the puffy chip, like a monster munch or something like that. You know, ah, like nice. a, a beef or bacon flake, something you know meaty. Is much. I'd much rather demolish packs of that. Like if we mm. go old school and go Space Invaders or Transformer <laughs> snacks, you know, there you you give me a box of them and they're gone in a night. <laughs> See, I like, I like, you can only see me from here, that here up, because uh, most of this is gut. Yeah, exactly the same. That's why the video cuts off here for me. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like spicy when it comes to crisps. Mm-hmm. Yes, some, yeah, sweet same. chili, Thai sweet chili. That, or, um... I think you just said spicy. Well, the the Walker's uh, Max flavor, the the jalapeno and cheese ones. Yeah, like... any, anything like that. Or the um, Tesco's were doing. Uh, Beef and horseradish at oh. Christmas. They had a nice bite. They had. A nice if you're going to do that, you got to you got to just do a twiddler. <laughs> yeah, it can't be a good twiddler. <laughs> never liked twiglets. I can't eat them now because they got wheat in them. But mm. never really liked them. I, I think for me that I, I think I discovered twiglets around the same time that there was the Mister Bean episode with the twiglets. Yes. And I think that's just kind of, they're all right. Like, I'm, I'm not a Marmite fan at all. But Twiglets, I can just about sort of almost of enjoy. Yeah, they, I can I can tolerate them. You know, if there's 
but it is one of those that when you you are questioning whether each one is, is meant to be in the packet or was just found on the shop floor. You do get a few that are a little bit too chewy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a joke in there about being made from Wookiees. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, 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 crisps have definitely been one of my my damaging foods over the years. I used to eat. I mean, yeah, I mean the packets, the big packets of kettle chips are single serving, aren't they? Mm, yeah, well, 150 I mean, grams. Yeah. yeah. Have you yeah. both tried for for the audio listeners? Is the Pop Works? So these these no, are doing rounds at the minute. These yes, are. Yes, I think I have. Amazing. You'll find them in your local supermarket. Um. But they are the form factor, you know, crisp shape, triangular things like the popular brand of um, tortilla chips. But with the kind of squidge and mouthfeel of maybe like a rice cake, mm -hmm. but made from popcorn and flavoured like popcorn. Gonna have so to try them. They are wonderful because it's it's like popcorn without the crap bits of popcorn. You know, you like break your tooth on a bit of yep. slightly un, oh, un yeah. pop. That's, that's, husk. Not, that's one of the worst things, isn't it? Yeah. That, so you get the, that, you get the joy of popcorn, the form factor of Doritos, and nothing bad. It's like the perfect combination, now. Yeah, it's my it's my new go to uh, crisp. That and the vegetable crisps. You know, where you get like parsnip and carrot and beetroot. Uh, see, I, now, I, now I really you've like gone down those. a road that I don't like vegetables. <laughs> 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 oh, I, I was. I, I'm. St you know, I'm. You know. I know. I'm an adult, and I've got a kid of my own, and he will eat his vegetables. But I still eat really vegetables. Yeah, ice cream for dinner is fine. Yeah. Yeah. He's <laughs> like, yes, you have to eat your carrots and your peas, but you haven't got yeah. any. I know, but you have to <laughs> scraping your plate onto his. <laughs> well, when I was little, I used to eat peas one at a time with a spoonful of ketchup. So. <laughs> the only way my mum could get the only way my mum could get me to eat peas. So I mean at that I point I would literally the, swallow them like a pill. But like surely at that point the, the ketchup is undoing any of the good that the peas were doing. It, it was going in. I think that's all that she cared about. <laughs> oh, I love Mary Poppins. I do like I do like kind of yeah, some nice Yeah, fresh fresh fruit. Now the question is peas. Fresh frozen peas. Yeah, so the fresh frozen. So yeah, within two hours of the uh, being picked and all that. Um, I think yeah, Gordon would have all the goodness. To say about that. But it's yeah, it's garden pea or mushy pea. Oh, garden pea every time for me. Yeah, like crisp, sweet, mushy peas. Yeah, yeah mushy peas just mix with the gravy too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got to be careful here. We might be turning into fools of tools talking about food so much. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, let's change to. Um, I was just going to ask about like, cheese then, actually. Yeah, it's, just like, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's been a good time of year for get, sort of getting cheese down, isn't it? Yeah, it's like. Uh -huh. That's the good thing about Christmas. You get you get at Christmas that range of foods that you don't get quite so easily at other times of mm. the year. Yeah. The, the variety of pâtés, for example. Mm -hmm. I do like a nice bit of pâté. But then you've got but, the stuff that. You People say, like, my mum used to treat things as Christmas food, even though you can get it all year round, like the smoked cheese in the, that looks like the sausage that comes in the sausage. Yeah, yeah. yeah but very that was always a Christmas food. We couldn't have it any other time. It was always Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is really good, though, in fairness. I'm not a fan of, like, smoky stuff normally, but mm -hmm. that particular one is it's good. With a bit of, with a bit of port salut. On a, on a nice little cracker, so like saltine cracker, can't beat that. That's a that's a that's a snack. That is. You can take a slice of it and put it between two mini cheddars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or Ritz, Ritz, Ritz biscuits. Ritz. True, but it's it's the contradicting shapes, then, isn't it? Though, because at least the mini cheddars are circular and of a similar size, so you're kind of making yourself a, a cheesy Oreo. Mm. Oh, Ritz, Ritz, a, Ritz, a circular. The Ritz biscuits, round ones. Yes, they are. Yeah, I'm thinking of you can tucks, get you can get why. the square. Yeah, you're thinking. Yeah, you're thinking. <laughs> yeah, I used to be able to get those already as a sandwich, couldn't you? Yeah, really you could with the with the cheese yeah. center. 
Yeah, can't be anymore, are they? We've gone straight down a weird <laughs> rabbit hole here. Yeah. <laughs> tell you what, I tell you what I like with a bit of cheese, a little bit of chili jam. No, I don't yeah, do spice. Che- but cheese and jam sandwiches are actually Yo. amazing. Cheese, but I have and some crisp cheese sandwiches. Oh. I do have some chili jam in the fridge, which is amazing with cheese. Oh, cheese and jam doesn't go together. <laughs> it really does. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's well, like, you know, a nice mild cheddar with something like hmm. a, a nice raspberry jam. Now, see, the it's... weirdest isn't even me. The weirdest is my sister. She used to put ice cream chocolate sauce inside sausage rolls. Okay. Yeah, she would. Yeah, that's yeah. She just cut them open, <laughs> and then pour the chocolate sauce in, close it, and and yeah, it's it's the weirdest. Uh, I've seen people do brown sauce. Yeah, brown sauce. sauce. I mean, yeah. It is technically a brown sauce. Yeah. Yes. Maybe she just got confused and maybe kind of liked it. That when like she's me. drinking um, pickle onion juice as well. So. <laughs> I'm trying. I mean, I'm just throwing my sister under a bus here, but. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, that's so I should have forgotten uh, yeah. my next Christmas should be fine. That's true. <laughs> well, yeah, pickled, really pickled onion juice should be pickled. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so where weird. where do we stand on McDonald's chips in the milkshake? No, I I haven't. I've eaten one McDonald's in the last thirty years. See, now you are missing out on something there, though. Uh, you know, because the the milk crispy, the new ingestion. one is it's just nice. <laughs> See, I never used to have McDonald's until my wife introduced me to the McDonald's breakfast. And then the pounds just went on and on and on after that. Mm. So I fair. fully blame her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just yeah see, I can't get kind of, home um, delivery where I am, so I have to go and get it. McDonald's just mentioned Worcestershire sauce on... Um, Melted toast and cheese. I'm assuming she means yes. melted cheese on the toast. Um, yes, melted toast is impressive. Yeah, but I do yeah. like yeah that's, that's good. cheese on toast. Well, nice cheese yeah. toasty. Oh yeah, yeah, cheese and bean toasties is good. I've never had bean mm. toasty. Tried it once. Just many, many, many cheese and ham. Yeah. Well, so it is a uh, it's a weird one, but bear with me. When you drop the bread down on the toasting machine make a kind of a wall of beans all the way around on the outside and then crack an egg into the middle close the toasting okay. and the toasting machine cooks the egg inside the toasting so you've got egg and bean toasting Ooh. okay i now need to get a toasting that is good. <laughs> it is about 300 million degrees when you try and bite into it as all toasties should be yeah it's not a proper toasty if it's not scolding yeah. I, Heston Blumenthal did a, a he made a giant toasting machine. And he, he basically bought like 150 toasting machines, pulled them all apart, made like welded steel frame, and then just put all of the heating elements together to so make did. one one giant like two meter by two meter toasting machine. Um, but they did all those tests and he was putting thermometers in to get you know like the, the temperature of the cheese. It's about 140 degrees. When it comes fresh out the toasting machine, if you've got melted cheese in there, it's brutal. And that's that's in science units, not Frankenstein. Yeah. Uh, not freedom hide. Yeah. Well, you're talking science units, so you're talking Kelvin then. So yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd, uh, uh, yeah. So I'd about to it. what four hundred, <laughs> four hundred Kelvin. <laughs> I. I one of my favourite toasties. I haven't had it for a while, actually. Very, very thinly sliced an onion. Onion on top of so bread, buttered obviously. Onion, some strawberry jam, then some cheddar, then the next piece of cheese. So we're going to talk about cheese and ham again. Cheese and ham again. The, again, yeah. the G, yeah, but the, the jam caramelises the onion and it's thin. It cooks, mm. so you end up with cheese with this kind of strawberry, almost a chutney, not quite a chutney, but because there's no vinegar. But so you get this kind of well, more like a jam, maybe actually, yeah, kind of this sort of onion strawberry jam. 
Very nice. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I, I tell you, so I saw one yeah. the other day. It was on. Uh, it was a reel on Instagram. Somebody took a waffle maker rather than a toaster, and they put mm. in frozen chips, French fries. They're quite thin, sort of rather than stick chips. So thin chips, which are still frozen, and a pile of grated cheese. I don't know if it was like fake or anything. I then clamped the whole okay. thing up. Mm -hmm. So you ended up then with this potato cheese waffle. That sounds pretty epic, to be fair. It, mm. it was. Yeah, a bit I of will... bacon on top of that, some gravy. Oh, I sent the reel to someone. Um, I, I didn't think you were in Northern and... Nepal. <laughs> I will send. I will send the. Uh, I'll send you the reel later. I'll send it to both of you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Was... Well, my mum comes from right up north, though, so you know I get like the battered, battered Mars bars and things like that. So. That's fair. That is fair. I've told this story before. But, um, I was at a biker rally years ago, and it was it was up in the northwest, so you get a lot of people from all over the country come up there um so they they had you know proper kind of northwest style grub van type thing and it was um it basically like all the all the lads from the northwest that all kind of looked like you and me Paul. you know they were all kind of perfectly understood what was going on mm -hmm. um and all the people who weren't from that area were very 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 confused by being just told to place the hand on the on the counter so the serviette goes down then a yeah. pie gets placed on top of their hand then a scoop of mash on top of the pie make a little well in the top mm -hmm. spoonful of peas in top of that and then they pour the gravy on top stick the fork in so you've basically got to kind of pay them quickly and then eat down from the top before the gravy reaches your hand yep so of course you've got all the all the lads who knew what was going on they had the money ready put the hand down told them what they were having and and that was that but then you've got all these guys who are then fiddling around very rapidly trying to find their wallets and trying to get cash out and with one hand <laughs> with one hand that they then can't do anything with because all the pies just balanced on the thing it's, there's no tray or anything it's literally just on top of the napkin and that's just washing up to do though isn't it so absolutely yeah it's just one napkin that you just chuck away job done but that was glorious to watch just the utter confusion on these people's faces of like what the, what the hell's happening why, why are you doing this to me now nah, so what's the pie of choice cheese and onion for me because i'm vegetation uh, cheese and onion? i like cheese and, I, do you like a cheese and onion pasty mm. can't find gluten-free ones anymore but actually no it given the, given the choice and availability a butter pie a butter, butter pie. pie a northwestern delicacy um that is it is kind of like potato gratin mm -hmm. but in a pie crust so it's like thin slices of potato and onion and butter basically cooked up in the pie so it's just a very rich buttery mashed potato kind of pie by the time you get to it nice it's always got to be short crust pastry you don't put puff pastry lid on a pie then it's not a pie mm -hmm. it's something other <laughs> Dems, Dems is the rules. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you got to go with just a classic, just a nice steak. You know, that's good enough for me. Bog standard. I don't even care if it's a special one. <laughs> I'm, I'm full, full on carnivore. So if it's meat, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> quite like, quite like a chicken and mushroom myself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not so good. Partly, partly because I'm not so good with red meat anymore. Yeah, it's, it's getting this old thing. It's just it's just not, not so good for guts and things. But but twenty five is um, not old. What are you talking about? Yeah. yeah well, yeah. It's well, yeah. Really it's hard paper round. It's been a tough five years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Actually, I tell you what, I do. I used to really quite enjoy when I kind of if I was getting like a pasty from you know wherever. You kind of you can get the Ginsters pasties, the chicken tikka pasty. Not had that. Now that, oh, well, if you don't like spicy food, you probably wouldn't. But the no. chicken tikka pasty, not too spicy. It's kind of yeah, it's not kind of a, a, a 
barely call it spicy, to be honest. It's it's kind of more about the flavour than than mm -hmm. there's certainly mm. not really much heat. It's own sort of spice level, it would be yeah, it'd be like yeah, one, but one if that you like all say that about all the stuff that you know, like I'll go, oh try this nice sauce, and everyone's like, No. But it tastes <laughs> really good. No, I'm not going near that stuff. <laughs> It's only a 12 yeah. out of 10. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, str I struggle with like chip shop curry sauce. So, you know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm proper like lightweight when it comes to spice. So, <laughs> you know, I've graduated from pouring it on my chips rather than dipping in. So, you know, I'm, I'm getting it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, chips, curry sauce, and cheese. That is perfect. I've never added the cheese. Because well, that, 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 that sounds like uh, what is it the Canadians uh, call it? Poutine. Uh, poutine. Ah, poutine. Yeah. yeah if Gra I mean, that, that's gravy. Than... He can he can tell us. You know. Well, that, that's more uh, curds of cheese. Um, is it? Um, yeah, with gravy. Yeah. Gravy. Yeah, rather than the curry sauce, but it's yeah, it's a similar kind of effort of like the cheese all gets melted and becomes napalm basically with the curry sauce. <laughs> Things I can remember school dinners in primary school where you'd get kind of sort of chips and this sort of curry sauce. And it wasn't really curry in any way no. whatsoever. It was just mm. kind of some vile gravy that they'd stick on the it was kind of green. It was more green than brown. <laughs> it looks like a puce colour. Yeah. And it's just like it put me off kind of ever having yeah, curry sauce from chip shop completely. Because mm. I also think it was exactly the same stuff. And yeah, the, the odd time that I did try somebody else's chips with a bit on it's just like yeah no that that's too much like school dinners when i was in primary school well a lot of chip shop curry sauce is basically just powder and oil in a pan yes so yeah, yeah it's not too surprising that yeah well to be fair the chip shop i go to is technically a chinese so it's it, the one that i get isn't too bad so that's fair i've had chinese for years Every now yeah, and again, can't remember the last time I had Chinese. Actually, it's the most Indian. Yeah, it's a problem for you though in Chinese. Uh, there's quite a lot. Of the, I mean, a lot of the, the places use gluten. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, wheat's cheap. So yeah, yeah my mum used to struggle a lot. Yeah, a lot of stuff gets. Um, yeah, they use it for thickening stuff, and uh, yeah, and even mm, stuff like with Indian right. cookery, the sort of things that you would. If traditionally would be made from, so something like a poppadom, yeah, it should be made from ground flour. Yeah. So that, I mean, which is, you know, completely, it's chippy flour. So I believe, again, cuz, if you're listening, correct me. Um, the, so that's completely gluten free. Mm. But if you actually kind of look at a lot of sort of some, some poppadoms, if you go to the supermarket, some are, are, are you know, ground flour and that's fine. Then other ones, yeah, they are. They're, they're full of wheat. Yeah, naans always full of wheat. I don't know if naans traditionally not be, but um, uh, I think they should be because I think they are still wheat flour, aren't they? Yeah, but you get, but then you get things like yeah, onion bhajis. So yeah, an onion bhaji mm. traditionally would be obviously shredded onion, and then it's dipped into. I'm not sure what liquid it's dipped into, but then it's dipped into the sort of gram flour to kind of then create that batter like that holds it together. Yeah. But yeah, and some, uh, so if you buy onion bhajis from, say, we sometimes get Indian sort of, sort of the takeaway food from sort of Tesco's a bit like, yeah, some Saturday night treat or something. Yeah, mm. in the microwave, yeah, it's, it's not quite the same as a, a dinner out, but yeah, it's a hell of a lot cheaper and mm. yeah, it's not a hell of a lot washing up and things. But yeah, it's just like, so sometimes, yeah, you can get, you have, you have, we have to check very carefully because there's only one of us in the house of four that, can eat wheat um so you'll so, so sometimes you get uh, onion bhajis yep they're fine and then another time different brand somewhere else and they're not and we've not had the, the one time we did go to a indian restaurant my wife and i uh we didn't have the best experience um, and yeah we were we were careful with what we ordered mm -hmm. but we were kind of like we were very very unconvinced that they were actually taking care of the fact yeah. that we'd sort of say yeah we 
don't want that and we can't have this and and then we, yeah, we just i mean we almost walked out at one point because it was like 45 minutes we hadn't been served anything that's after our order and i think half, coming afterwards had half the like, problem i think these days is it's the fashion now as well is not eating wheat so it's not because they can't it's because they're on training or whatever and yeah. like it, that annoys people because you know they can they you know yeah they, and then they the, can the, do it. yeah you get a lot you get a lot of um i can remember when we were at a wedding and because we were going it was you know we were part of the family there'd been a plate a table put out with, which was gluten-free and that stuff yep. was marked up dairy free as well and and tell you what i'll tell you what it was brilliant it was absolutely amazing food um there was like your, your little, little um cornish pasties and there's some cheese and onion ones and they were delicious absolutely delicious they didn't feel like yeah because a lot of gluten-free stuff is horrible really is yeah. i mean they're trying their best but you know some things just don't work without gluten basically but whatever they were doing with this it, it was absolutely delightful and there was somebody at the, at the, at the wedding who just like, in the kind of queue for the kind of food he was having a complete go about how it was such a fad and yeah, it was just we were just kind of making it, it was just like yeah look, look, if i eat that pasty over there i'll spend the next three days not being able to mm -hmm. do anything at least and i will yeah. lose at yeah. least five pounds in weight yeah yeah so I, I i i really wanted to sort of say you yeah. so no stuff you but i didn't because mm. it was a wedding and it wouldn't have been polite well, I, mean, I think really there's, there is it. i was just really going off on it about kind of yeah i think there's good and bad to that though in the the for something you know being celiac for instance is a, a relatively small number of the population yeah having gluten sensitivity is a higher population and then having the the fad version of i can't eat gluten is obviously a, a larger percentage on top so with that overall number of the population who is trying to avoid gluten for one reason or another it does at least give an incentive for manufacturers to try and make new and more interesting options yeah, yeah things, so things, it, are getting, it does, things are getting better yeah but that in you know by proxy of the annoying people adding numbers to the group oh yeah yeah, it yeah does yeah, actually yeah. give the people who really genuinely actually yeah. need it yeah, you know yeah. a bit more of a um... oh i mean the, the difference over the last just 10 years mm -hmm. yeah is is tremendous what's available and the amount of it uh yeah mum used to make her own rolls they would be sat in the kitchen proving for days but she would make she'd make her and they were really nice rolls as well i prefer them over normal rolls so we've got we've got a friend who do we get into the debate over the, the name uh, <laughs> <laughs> i mean if you want to spend another half an hour i can't you know yeah. <laughs> so whether it's a roll a bap a, a cob yeah a barn red cake, cake depending on which which uh, part of a five mile radius of the country you're in <laughs> every uh, other street soft, has whether it's name. soft on top or whether it's hard on top mm -hmm. have yeah. you heard the new yeah. one though um is is twix a biscuit or a chocolate bar oh that wasn't that uh richard osman that was yeah. um staring the pot with that Ooh. yeah what they are is fantastic straws. See, there was a girl I used to work oh, cool. with that drunk tea through of Twix. I yeah, I was going to say, it. nice fresh brew, bite either end off, and then drink it, the brew through it like a straw. When when the hot liquid Never touches your lips, that. flip it around in like a Tim Tam slam, but with a Twix. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> it's amazing with with like a really really like good fresh hot coffee. And then they do uh, salted caramel Twix, mm -hmm. and that is oh, it's a lovely little treat. It's, yeah, it's dangerous because now I want that. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I tell you what, I'll tell you what's a good one. Uh, if you if you're doing if you want to doing a bit of a cheat curry, throw a bounty in at the end. That's a good shout. Yeah, you could, you could go for the uh, the red one rather than the blue one. Yeah, yeah, for the, the, the dark chocolate yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. I do. I do have to say that uh, a 
tablespoon of peanut butter in some like tomato pasta. Mm-hmm. That works really well, especially if you've got like a tomato and veg kind of pasta sauce going. Big old dollop of peanut butter in that just kind of gives it a bit more of a thick richness. I've seen a lot of Marmite recipes going around TikTok recently, like Marmite broccoli and um, sprouts, sorry. And things like that. I like yeah. Marmite. But no. no, that can all go in the bin for me. That's, 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 that's going to that's go, that's go divide the population, isn't it? Sprouts and Marmite. Well, sprouts will do that originally anyway. I was going to say, I want and to see the Venn, di- the Venn yeah. diagram for that is going to be amazing. I mean, but are you more likely to like sprouts now. if you like Marmite? Well, so, because the, the, the whole backstory with the sprout thing is is it's a, it's a genetic genetic adaptation as to whether yes. or not you like sprouts down to whether or oh. not your mouth produces the particular enzyme that breaks down the component that has a bitter element to it. So if you if you do like sprouts, you don't produce that enzyme, so you don't taste the bitter flavor. Mm-hmm. But in recent years, they've been rebreeding sprouts to breed out yeah. that bitter flavor to make sprouts oh. more generally enjoyable for everyone else. They're all bred from the mustard plant, I think, originally. Oh, As is well. like yeah. cabbage and a handful of other things are all from a prehistoric mustard plant. Never knew that. No, I knew they were all brassicas. I think that brassicas came from as well mustard. I believe, I believe that is. Yeah. Along with a handful of other stuff. It's the random crap you see on the internet and retain the yeah. knowledge of. <laughs> I'm getting hungry now. That's the end. Yeah. Yeah, I've already had a few messages come through saying the same thing. <laughs> Or begging us to stop. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> and no doubt the people that catch up on this, you know, uh, during the week are going to be the same. Just yeah. insults coming our way. <laughs> I, do, I do. I mean, I, I, I do. I, mean, we, I think we all. Yeah, we we like our food. I think, and I, I think it's. Yeah. Hey, it's well, it's nice to kind of consider the range of stuff that we've got available to us now. It's, it mm. is definitely yeah it is marvelous and the fact that we can actually sort of consider yeah i think we've, we've reached a stage is probably because of the internet where we kind of go well actually yeah i can, I can try marmite in sprouts yeah rather than yeah sprouts will only be made by peeling off two leaves cutting across in the bottom and boiling them for three weeks yeah <laughs> until they <laughs> until go they're, gray yeah yeah <laughs> So uh, there was a, a video around Christmas time of um, Eddie Hall, the world's strongest man, and Leah Shutkiva, who's a competitive eater. Both phenomenally accomplished humans in their field. Um, I mean, Eddie is about four times the size of Leah. You know, she, she's a, a competitive eater, but has this phenomenal ability to just consume colossal amounts of food she's and also a, she's also an athlete in her, her, her own she is yes yeah respect as well um, she's a uh body call her a bodybuilder yeah uh, a bodybuilder or kind of more what, what's the other kind of not bodybuilding but not yeah i can't remember mass, the, but going for form mm, yes aesthetic yeah i can't remember the uh but the the phrase that she uses but yeah so she she's a uh you know kind of fitness fanatic um but professional eater as well and eddie being just this colossal lump of a human um so every they've done a handful of challenges together and every time leah has just completely demolished eddie you know he's at best got halfway through the challenge before she's finished um but they flipped the tables by they did an eating challenge that she annihilated him on but then they brought out a big tray of uh, like 60 sprouts each and then played chubby bunny with sprouts. So the, the aim of that game with two people is you, you it's normally done with marshmallows. And the right. idea is you, you place a marshmallow in your mouth and then you say chubby bunny. And then the next person does the same thing. Yep. And you go in, go round in turns, put each add in an extra one to your mouth. You're not allowed to chew them or swallow them. 
you just have to stuff it in your mouth and say chubby bunny and then it moves to the next person until someone either spits them all out or fails or whatever and because of eddie's sheer volume of head he just kept stuffing more and more and more sprouts in um and it was it was a ridiculous amount of sprouts it was, it yeah. was around the 40 sprout mark that he got to the point where he just couldn't physically keep there was no space left in his face um but that was that was after they'd done an eating challenge as well so it's, it's a fantastic video to watch because you then see that they had an audience while these okay. two people are sat smack bang in the middle of like a food court with people surrounding them while they're trying to make each other laugh and say jubby bunny with a no she was she was dying from last time, wasn't she on that yeah <laughs> i'll have to have a look for that one that sounds quite good I'll, I'll a post point, a link yeah. to it in the show notes tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. It's it. I mean, it's incredible. Just how much food she can consume. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. I, I, th th there was one that she did this week, which was a, a cooked breakfast. But it was like it was by the time you took the, the fried bread and the toast, it would have been a loaf of bread. Oh. It was the, the it was a like a builder's breakfast type thing. Yeah. And it was basically it was pegged as being six of everything. Right. So it was like six big sausages, six pieces of black pudding, six bacon, six pieces of toast, six pieces of fried bread. Um the the whole works. It was it was just a massive Yeah. Like, plate of food wasn't it with with all the ancillaries around the side i, I like and there was like so what was something like yeah you had to eat it within an hour or something yeah it was just like yeah so you you, you i think it was it was an hour or 45 minutes was the time limit to to eat it as the challenge but there's another competitive eater called beard meets food yeah and i've, I've been down his rabbit hole um yeah so he... wrong um <laughs> i've watched his content a lot He'd, he'd set a time for how how quick to get this down. So she'd basically been set the challenge of, well, you've got to beat him. And if you if you beat his time, you basically get free food for life from here. And uh, 50 yeah. quid. And, and 50 quid and a <laughs> T-shirt, I think, and all the rest of the stuff. So it was just this like list of stuff as long as you could beat him as well. And spoiler um, alert, she smashed it. Yeah, she did. Wow. <laughs> It's just a, I mean, I, when I was when I was working in industry for long before I was a teacher, so I, I would I would be in about 23, 24. We the place I worked at, we used to go for obviously yeah, like most people, yeah, you have a Christmas works do. And there was a team of us in the lab. We didn't go there were there wasn't a kind of whole factory works do. Uh there was we the team of us that were in the lab, we we booked a place at a steakhouse. And, there was two, uh, there were two Christmases that I was there, and we booked the same steakhouse. I can't remember what it was called now, but it was in, in a place called Romney, in South Wales. And we went midweek, and midweek they would do a forty-eight ounce steak or a forty-eight ounce mixed grill. They wouldn't do it at the weekend because it was just too much cooking, too many people would sort of thing. But midweek they would do that, so we used to go midweek. And the first year. I had a starter and then had the 48 ounce steak. And the starter was a mistake, but I did finish the steak. So, I, but I didn't then have a dessert because mm -hmm. it was just like, yeah, it was just like feeding like the it. last chip in. It was just like, and then just sitting there, like, kind of, yeah, for some more two years, it's like, yeah, just, somebody offered me a whiff thin mint, I would have exploded. <laughs> It's all the, all these uh, challenges you see. Like I could like if, I'll do the meat bit, but it's all the other bits that come with it. It's like I'm never going to finish all of that, but I'll have the meat. That's fine. Well, the second the second year, I, I went. I thought right, uh, well, not on the starter this year. So I didn't have the starter, but I still had the I had the forty eight ounce steak again, and I would order dessert. And one of the other guys, he'd had the forty eight ounce mixed grill, and he hadn't been able to finish it. So I'd help finish off the mixed grill, and then I had his dessert as well. And it was just like, <laughs> I think it, I didn't want to eat for about three days. Yeah. I just like, the next morning, I was like, I'd stayed over at my supervisor's house, because it was safe sort of going home, because it would be late finish. It was just like, mm. it was like, some breakfast. No. Oh. <laughs> 
See, despite the size of me, I, I don't pack as much food in as I look like I should. Um, but uh, a mate of mine is it, ripped the piss out of me for years on this kind of stuff because he's like half my size, but will eat three times as much as me. And uh, he, at one point, he was he was working for um, a well-known postal company in the UK, and uh, it just come off the back of a like a twelve-hour night shift and sort of wandered past Subway with his wages in his hand and a, a grumbly belly and just went, I think I might I might treat myself to a Subway. So kind of nipped in, got his foot-long sub, demolished that and went, oh, I could eat another one of those. Sod it, I think I will. Wanders back in, grabs another. And while getting halfway through that, he went, I could probably do a third, I think. Ah, <laughs> ah. <laughs> So wandered back in and then basically went, sod it. I'm six foot tall. I'm going to eat me height in subs. <laughs> so did. He just not? carried on back to back and at six foot longs in one after the other. So, yeah, which is, uh, there's no chance in hell I'd ever be able to do that, no matter how hungry I was. It's just. Well, I'm, not, I'm not too bad. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty. I like pretty basic things. So, you know, if you just stick a lot of meat and chips in front of me, I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not anymore. Though. I'm well. on a diet, so you know. <laughs> back, back to the gym. Back to the diet. And I hate it. So. Well, if you're gonna be wheeling yeah. these axes around, yeah, you've got to look the part, haven't you? Really? That's very true. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's a lot I, of breathing in. Is this almost getting towards like sensible introduction and talking about shop here, Andy? Yeah, that was that was what's known that was, as was that one of those as a segue. <laughs> <laughs> was it a sea goose? Yeah, yeah, one of those sea goose <laughs> that Steve loves. <laughs> it's not a segue until you point it out, though. That's that's what we do. What we no. do. Ah, yeah, yeah. So that bit back there, that, that was that was a. <laughs> uh, you are becoming a bit known for your um your mallets and your your axes and your your, your big weaponry I, yeah i like making oh. big things because i've always wanted them and can't buy them so i yeah I make it myself to scale yeah well I, I do exaggerate at times with some of the things that i've made so there's a joke in there that I'm going to leave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the only problem is, is what do I do with them afterwards? So I've got the axes sat there, but I, I don't know what to do with it because I'd like to put it on the wall, but I've got no space. And it's like, okay, clearly well, the, the only, the only sensible course of action is to make a metal tree and then try and cut it down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's an option. <laughs> I, no, I love I love making stuff like that. It's it's, it's always been a because I, I mean I love blacksmithing, but I can't black I don't have anywhere to do blacksmithing or anything like that. Mm. Uh, so I'll make them out of wood instead. That I can do, and it's yeah, just so much fun just making things that are big and meant to be pointy and sharp but aren't. So <laughs> slightly more more safe. I was just saying, I hope now, just kind of sort of touching on the blacksmith side of things, with your new green screen, that we might oh, yes. see some, uh, some blacksmithing of the the wooden axes or the swords or, or mallet, yeah. hammers or whatever the light. Um, I think that could, that could be quite a nice little thing to work on. I'm very much looking forward to playing with that some more. <laughs> very much looking forward to it. It was like, oh, because I, I got a refund from Amazon. It's like, what can I spend that on? Oh, I know. Let's have a look. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, I, I love it. I love it. But yeah, no, the, the um, Makers is going to be interesting this year because mm. I plan on making the six foot sword. So I'm, okay. I'm just currently waiting for the wood to arrive from a certain supplier that is hopefully giving it to me um because otherwise it cost me about 350 quid in wood so Ooh. yeah i i i priced it so, not, not, so like, not being cupine then 
No, no, not being cute. Well, that's the thing. I I could, I could quite easily make it all out of pine, but that's just a little bit mundane. Yeah. So, like, I because like the machete that I made had a Paduke edge. The um, kunai has a Paduke edge. So that's sort of becoming more my signature now. Well, I mean, if, you, red if you were to make it, if you were to make it out of Binky or Wix kind of bog standard off the shelf stuff, you could start out with a straight blade, and it could become a scimitar on its own. It could do, yeah. Just have a like a corkscrew one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was only going to suggest cat- katana then, but yeah. Yeah, I could do a nice katana. Yeah, got, oh, that's that's actually on my list of things I've got to make. I've got to make at some point. Because um, mm. I had someone ask me the other day, oh, are you, aren't you going to run out of stuff to make? And it's like, how, how much anime and cartoons and things have you thought I've watched in my life? I've got have a you ever found of things the internet? I can try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, sword. Okay, hold on. Oh, look, lots. Yeah. <laughs> well, even, I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, just, even if you just started, you know, found the, you know, the A to Z of swords, Book mm. from the library or something here. Yeah. I don't know if there is an eight set of swords, but yeah. Oh, there will there be. be. No doubt there is. I mean, there's certainly probably a website somewhere, isn't there? Yeah. I mean, the number of different types of sword. Yeah, every culture. Well, there's, a, there's at has... least twenty six projects there. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Just in the eighth of that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just take yeah. all the different all the different sort of regions. Yeah, you, you know, the, the swords that the Romans had, the, mm-hmm. the Egyptians, like the 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 the, the, the Northerners. Yeah, you know, the, <laughs> the Greeks, the, the Danes, <laughs> <laughs> the Rasmuses. <laughs> yeah, there's so there's so many. Like the, like a Gladius is on is definitely on the list because I've wanted one of them yeah. since Spartacus. Because so that would be very cool, and yeah, it's just. There's anything. There's so many. Like, all the video game stuff I can mm. make. Like I'm, I've sort of started calling myself a, a woodsmith instead of a bladesmith as well, which is my. I'm coining my little term there. So I like it. No, I like yeah. it. So what? What's are you allowed to tell us? What sword you're going to be making for? Well, I, I think I. It was. I sort of put up a post a while ago with just the outline of it, but it's um, it's it's called the Deirdre Great Sword from Skyrim. Mm-hmm. So if anyone, most gamers will know what sword that is. If you don't play games, you won't. But it's basically just a giant sword. Um, and it's it's sort of two double-sided great sword that the handle alone is probably about that long. So you're looking at a proper big thing. Claymore style. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And so I'm looking at doing it out of oak, walnut, and paduke. So... It's gonna. It's going to look pretty. Mm. I haven't decided yet whether I'm gonna um, put any Rubio colours on it because I'm because it's meant to be like black, yeah. red, and silver is the yeah. proper design for it. But I don't know whether that'll take away from the wood too much. So I might get a bit of Rubio on it. Some of the pre colours, um, but I, I can't. I. I'm, if as long as it pans out like the vision in my head, it will look cool. But it's not always that good for me. Sometimes it gets stuck at my elbow. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might even weigh as much or more than a steel one as well by that point. Probably yes. Yeah. <laughs> um. The the giant mallet hammer thing that I made for last year. I mean, I dread to think how much that weighed. But I mean, carrying it around for a, a while. At the start of the show was starting to hurt. So <laughs> definitely that gym time in then. Yeah, yeah. I mean that yeah, like it's just sort of trying to obviously trying to get my name out there as well, you know, because I'm a fairly small content maker, but you know, I've got this charity big charity build that I can do every year. Um mm. that so many people go to. And I mean last year there was I think two or three guys from switzerland and they but they all of them dropped about 50 quid each trying to win the giant mallet nice. so i mean at least that's 150 quid to charity for it for nice. it, so you know and like the the axe was all scrap wood obviously for the turgworks challenge that all came from an oak pallet so 
it's That's just jammy, it's just wiping it with my hands on, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the, I, I, mean, I saw the mallet at Makers last year. It was a fantastic piece of work. It's, uh... The only thing I regret about that is I got Jimmy Dresta to spray his thing on the handle because he was doing the spray painting tagging. Yeah. And I got him to do it thinking, oh, that'd be cool. And I went, yeah, I regret doing that now, actually. Because everyone thought he made it. <laughs> yeah, way. of course. Ah. Uh... But it, I mean, it gave it a little bit. I thought it might put, get promote it, get a little bit more people trying to trying to win it. But yeah, I, I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy gets everywhere yeah. anyway. He would got round to it and done it eventually. Yeah. Well, I think the guy, the guy, the guy that the guy that won it got him to do it on the other side of the handle as well. So okay. <laughs> I was, I was just going to say, have you thought of maybe doing some almost like something like you know, if you're making something that almost have almost something that goes with it, that kind of almost like a presentation, possibly mm. like a presentation something. Like yeah, Shield, really, for example, and then yeah. you could get a bunch of makers to put their things on the back to kind of. Yeah, I've got, I'm I am quite tempted to do something like that because um, I, I for maybe not this year, but for next year, I want to make a couple of Viking axes. Um, mm to like go and so a shield would go quite nicely with that and yeah i could get loads of people what, to what would be it. really cool in that sense then is go if you're going for like the viking style is to go for one of the viking circular shields yeah seeing as you've got a circular logo yeah that would look pretty cool as a as a thing so yeah no there's there's lots of lots of plans for well as long as maker central keeps going i'll I'll keep putting mm. a, a big charity build in every year. That that's my plan anyway. So that's that's nice. definitely I think even if, it, even if it doesn't, bit. I think that I think there will be other things that will either not necessarily take its place, but there'll be other Yeah, the the, the, the woodworking show in Harrogate's been going for decades, yeah. I believe. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to. I did try want to go that to this one, but it, with the family, it didn't really work out. But I, it's the only, makers is the only show that I've actually been to so far. But I know there are quite a few others. Mm. So I reckon you can do it. And so, so, I mean, you've been working a little bit with Rubio, haven't you? I, I believe you kind of. Yeah, I'm. One, I'm one of the um, smaller Rubio ambassadors. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I mean, they go to probably a, a massive number of. Sort of the sort of smaller shows, yeah, yeah. Because I go to the, the wood turning shows, the tool shows, you know. So there's, although it's not going to be quite the same, there's mm. always those sort of opportunities as well. Something like yeah, that. yeah. No, Rubio would be really good, actually. Really good, sort of, sort of giving me a few things to play with and practice with. So I think I, I mean I think it's I think I, I'd really like what you're doing with the kind of thing i think i think it's a it's i mean there are other people making sort of wooden weapons and yeah. obviously there are plenty mm -hmm. of people making props from the kind of yeah yeah the cosplay world which yeah it's is, 3d printing is, and... which is kind of in, it's another venn diagram sort yeah. of thing yeah yeah but i think that there's certainly not many people doing it but, and that's yeah. and that's why i sort of i wanted to stick to the hardwood as well because like yeah i mean a lot of these the replicas and things you can get are, is all mostly softwood um and things like that because it's it's cheaper it's cheaper to make but yeah, yeah of course you know um, you know and so if i can make hardwood giant things i mean po i have no idea how i would post any of it if i ever tried to actually sell it <laughs> <laughs> you'd have but, to yeah. make you'd have to make a crate it would have to be courier oh, you'd have to kind of you'd have to create it wouldn't you It'd probably be cheaper just to uh, drive it myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. Back of car, I'd drive it on myself. Yeah. Hand delivered. Yeah, well, you know, it's an excuse to meet the maker then as well, isn't it? Not exactly. Not the, uh... Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it could be interesting to try and explain to kind of you. Obviously, you work in Rubio. You'll get in on the um, uh, with the. Exhibitor passes, weren't you? Because I was just mm -hmm. thinking, trying to walk through the NEC, um, mm. yeah, the front entrance at the start of Makers, past the kind of the regular custom. Well, customers they they did of, stop me at like, the entrance this year. Six that was, sorry. Yeah, they did. They did stop me last year when I had the giant hammer. Um, the security did trying to get through, and like, well, where are you going with that? And he's like, well, to the woodworking show, obviously. And he's like, <laughs> oh, I don't know if you could bring that in. He's like, 
what I'm going to. <laughs> you know, so, You're going to stop yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like walking through with a six foot four sword on my shoulder could be quite interesting this year. So, <laughs> so, the, only, so the only problem with, with, with that is once it's on like the display at the back for people to win it, it it's then gone and no one gets to see it or touch mm. it. You know, so it's, I have been debating whether I get like a stand at some, maybe not this year, but like when I get, you know, down the line a little bit, getting a stand and things, but it's just where do I keep them before I do all that? You know, yeah, I need a little, uh, a little lock box, lock, um, lock up somewhere just to keep the, the yeah. all, all the wooden things I make. Well, what's your ceiling situation? Um, well, the ceiling is technically someone else's floor because <laughs> I, my, my workshop's underneath their coach house. So it's, ah, uh, hmm. that that's why I I struggle to do anything sort of after six Sense seven o'clock. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I'm I'm really it's at this time of day. It's always a bit hand sanding and chisel work and light stuff. It's never any power tools, which is frustrating if I've got a deadline for something. But mm. I mean, it, I I I work around them because they could quite easily turn around and say, "No, you're not you're not doing it anymore," and I would have absolutely no choice. Because yeah. I don't actually technically think I'm meant to have power in here. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I'll we'll keep that quiet. Yeah, you but, clearly, you're only able to get on yeah, Batteries are amazing yeah. nowadays. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, to be fair, if they did say that, I would just run a cable from the back of the house and say, well, I don't. It's not hardwired in. It's on an extension <laughs> league, so. Yes. Yeah, as long as it's RCD protected on one end, you're fine. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I so know. expanding bolts into the ceiling and having a a, a, a metal two inch mesh, which yeah, you can that, then kind of you know I secure don't know if that to would go down might well. be yeah. yeah. <laughs> it would look. I good, mean, though. I do. I am. I am starting to outgrow this place, unfortunately, but because I'm, I don't really make any money from this. Yeah, I sell mallets here and there on Etsy and things like that, um, and like the mini mallets always sell quite well. But it's yeah, it's not enough to warrant. A workshop mm. anywhere really you know so it, it's so it's it's a very difficult balance to get of moving up and scaling when you can't yeah. really justify it yet so that's fair so. And, and that that that's tricky for a lot lot of sort of hobbyist makers who want to just take that step into a side hustle yeah unless they already have the you know the luxury of having say a a, a two a proper double size garage or even maybe mm -hmm. a triple mm -hmm. or a good size workshop they've you know they've they've taken the time maybe they're older and they've invested and they've got yeah you know, a large workshop in the garden or something like that yeah you know, to try and to make money you need often particularly with woodworking you need a bit more space you need better tools yeah because you need to make it a rate yeah. You know, yes, you can make stuff in a small workshop with few tools, but it's slow. And to make money, yeah. you need to do things quickly. Yeah. And ideally, you want to batch things out because batching things out is more efficient as well. But there's that step then of kind of you. Know, you know, do you take a risk and try and invest? Yeah, you know, money that you perhaps don't have to get yeah. somewhere big enough, to then make stuff and then hopefully pay that back and break start breaking even but that then it becomes perhaps less enjoyable mm -hmm. or try and find those things that maybe you can build quick enough and uniquely enough that people go yes i want a six foot tall double-handed broadsword from a video game and i'm prepared to pay the large sum of money the benefits yeah. for the amount of material they say yeah a few hundred pounds worth of wood yeah and mm -hmm. many many hours of manufacture mm -hmm. yeah that, that's it's it's uh not cheap i mean yeah no it's not like my my workshop my workbench takes up most of the space in my workshop but mm -hmm. if i'm building the bigger things i need that setup space yeah but like i i could do with a jointer because buying par is going to be more expensive than getting the rough sawn stuff I could get yeah. the rough sawn, it'd be a lot cheaper and I'd mill it myself. But I don't, I have a tiny bench top jointer, which is so rubbish, it's ridiculous. You know, so it's, it's, 
getting that investment, that initial investment, and something else always comes up, doesn't it? You know, yeah. well, I've, I've saved yeah. up a bit of cat. Yeah. Oh no, I need to go and buy that now. So, like a green screen, <laughs> 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 something I didn't really need, but I wanted. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's another tool for videos, isn't it? Yeah, but, but this and is it, isn't difficulty. it? Yeah, you kind of like, yeah, battery goes on the car, or yeah, this morning our boiler started making an awful banging. I think mm. it was just a bit of air got into the system because I've spent a bit quite a bit of time this morning sort of bleeding a few radiators, and it's heating's been on the rest of the day without any issues. That reminds me, I need to do that. Yeah, I, mean, I hadn't I hadn't done it for a while, and I think it was just it, yeah, it sounded like there was a well, it sounded like the boiler was going to blow up, or but yeah, just bang, 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 bang. But, mm. I mean, that's the difficulty for me because I'm, I'm. It's whether I decide, all right, am I trying to do this to make money, or am I trying to do it to make content? And I'm leaning more towards the content for because I want to make the YouTube better. So yes, yep. I've got my Etsy, which has got some things on it. That's mm. great, but I want to make interesting content for YouTube to try and, I don't know, eventually get a sponsor or something like that, you know, yeah. get, get those subs up and monetize. And so it's, it's trying to walk that very thin line of making it. But I, you, you know, I can, there's only so many hammers I can make on YouTube. There's only, you know, it's, Oh, I'm doing, I'm doing another mallet build today for a customer. Yeah. No one's going to watch the third mallet video. <laughs> <laughs> If, it, if it's the same, yeah, I mean, if it's the same type of mallet, yeah. then yeah, you're right. But I think, I think it's yeah. uh, with obviously producing content is a different game, isn't it? Than yeah. trying to make a business and trying to make content, which is in itself a business, but a different type of business is very much yeah. a different sort of style of game. You know, the yeah. one you're trying to get things manufactured and advertised as quickly as possible to get out to customers. With the content creation, you have to make things interesting. You still have to get things out. You have to get things out on a regular basis. And you know, mm -hmm. I think now with you know, the likes of vertical video platforms, you know, whether it's you know, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, that has that kind of potential to kind of get kind of traction going that goes elsewhere. But have then, you yeah, seen getting... the changes to the YouTube monetization? Uh, so a they've added bit. shorts to it now. Yes, the shorts but it's been done on a pool before. basis, I think. Yes, night. You've got to do it within ninety days, but you've got to get ten million views. <laughs> Which I mean, I, yeah, it, it sounds like a lot, but I mean, shorts can what be thirty seconds, so you can yeah. knock a short out and upload hundreds of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's and you always have to big number. Yeah, yeah, because it's such a big number, it's it feels slightly more attainable because like the watch hours even though it's a year you've got it you know because like the my, one of my best performing videos is the understairs cupboard build but all fifteen thousand views of, of, of that don't don't count anymore yeah. because it's over a year whereas mm. making the shorts seem feels more obtainable even though it's such a high number you know you can just bang out cut your youtube videos up and bang out some shorts for it yeah. It, it, it should do, you know, it, it's, it feels like at least it's more obtainable now, but it's, it, it's a numbers game. I can see why people pay companies to get monetized. Yeah. I really, I really yeah. can, you know, it, cause it's such a hard game. Well, I mean, once you're there, it's great. Cause if you drop down, it doesn't matter. Cause you're already monetized, but just getting that initial point is very hard compared to what it used to be when it was only 500 subscribers and a thousand watch hours before you know back 10 years ago it was so much easier and that's why yeah. now it's hard for the smaller guys i think i think that, i mean there there's there's a lot of mileage in though considering actually what the sort of situation is i mean yeah the number of youtube channels with only one video on it yeah, the number of channels. I have a prime example. I'll tell some tinker. You prime example. Yeah, I haven't put a video up in at least twelve months. I think it's twelve months now. Oh, really? Um, and you know, the number of channels. If if you put out regular content, good content, and then also kind of match that with kind of you know trying to grab attention. 
you know, taking the snippets, taking little pockets of vertical video, making them an Instagram reel, which you also, you know, then upload natively to TikTok and also to shorts and, you know, those little kind of attention grabbers. And I think, I, I honestly, I, I obviously have not a prime example because I can't prove that it works, but I think, but I'm, the things I've listened to, the things that I've seen and heard other people talking about and blogs I've read, I think probably the most important, there's, I think there's sort of, I'm trying to sort of number it in my head. Yeah, if, if you put out regular good content that engages an audience, so yeah, as you're either telling a story or you're, you're sharing something that no one else is doing or you're, you're doing something in a, perhaps an innovative way, growth will follow. Yeah, yeah. It, it, you see it time and time again. Um, yeah. Yes, there can be an element of luck if something goes viral. If you get something happens at the right time, you can, and that can be a real sort of you know, rocket boost to kind of numbers and whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think when people put something out consistently of a good quality, the growth will be there. And yeah, yeah, yeah. There may be a limit depending on sort of the style. So yeah, somebody pottering in their workshop every week, putting out a video every week may become monetized may have a little community there's a regular group of people that you know follow and, and sort of engage mm -hmm. they won't necessarily make as much progress as perhaps somebody that's creating giant axes and you know, giant hammers based on mm. you know nerd culture which is then going to attract a, a much wider audience yeah there'll always yeah. be an audience for people who want to um see you know, oh, how to make you know a, a variation on french cleats for holding your tools yeah you know, there's, there's <laughs> plenty of people who will watch something like that because oh that might be helpful to me or you know watch me to do my workshop tour i mean the number of you know 2023 workshop yeah. tours you've seen already this year it's that um, it's that standard of oh, let's repeat it every year sort of yeah. content yeah but they're, they're a little i think with that kind of content unless you also have either a, a, a big following because you're yeah. Jimmy Dressed or the like, um, there'll probably be a limit to how big your audience will, will mm -hmm. get, but it'll probably keep you in glue and, you know, uh, you know a few new tools every year. Um, but if you have something that kind of goes beyond just, you know, not just the maker community or the, the woodworking community it's but also the overlaps, isn't it? with the yeah. nerd culture or you know whatever else mm -hmm. and that's just yeah just the, the scope then is is, is huge to yeah. sort of grow it's, yeah well you, you're sort of you, you're trying to pick from multiple pots of followers for for kind of branched growth then aren't you yeah yeah yeah, yeah i mean that's that's what i'm trying to do with my stuff now because I like I I've, I've got a video that's almost ready to be released now <clears throat> for my son's uh, sting for the Lord of the Rings blade. Nice um, video is all edited and annoyingly I just need to do the thumbnail for it. But like that's made to scale for him, so it's smaller than a normal one. But it, the actual way I built it is is exactly how a bladesmith would do it. So it's not a woodworker. Mm. It, it's because I like they would have just carved it out and been done but i've actually done the guard the blade the pommel all of it separately and then attaching it similarly similarly mm. sim in a similar manner you know in the there yeah, in the same way that a blade's a bit like the other way than a woodworker so it's yeah. trying to find that little niche that i can fit into and then bringing yeah the the video game culture the nerd the anime all of those people into it that mm. are searching for these things and just trying to wiggle my way into all of them <laughs> That's the plan, anyway. We'll see. We'll see how it works. I think it's. I think it's a good plan. I like it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's got. It's got a lot. I mean, like you say, you're, you're not going to run out of material to or items to make. No. Yeah, but it's time to take every kind of video game and law based on yeah, whether it's Lord of the Rings or whatever. Plus, obviously, all. Yeah, so we'll take swords, knives, axes, plus take actual historical 
items as well. I mean, it, there's, a lifetime's, for. there's a lifetime's worth of content just in that if all of other, you know, all other content production and nerd culture stuff stopped right now, just the stuff that's been made up until today, yeah. there's a lifetime's worth of content. Yeah. But there's always going to be new stuff to that as well anyway. And especially like anime, you know, the ridiculous shapes that they come up with things. Yeah. That that if I want something a little bit outrageous, yeah, I'll just look up an anime sword and it'll be like, yeah, that's a weird shape. That'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and and there will be someone that will want to buy that as well. So oh, totally, yeah. So, just need to find a shipping. That's my next task is a shipping. <laughs> it's got to be crates. It's yeah. got to be crates. Crates yeah. and OSB. But then you've also still got like... the mountain inside. <laughs> yeah, you've still got that mountain inside. <laughs> So it doesn't yeah. bash around. Well, yeah, so I, mean, I, I try and use all second-hand boxes and stuff at the minute. So, mm. you know, doing my bit for the environment. But uh, oh, I mean, I guess I guess you know, part of the way to go is to make a decorative display case for each yeah. item mm -hmm. that doubles as the transport <laughs> case. <laughs> I, I did a, a 3D printed version of uh, Narzil for my dad. Mm -hmm. um, or the, the, you know, the broken shards of Narzil. Yeah. And uh, to, to ship that from where I live in the Midlands up to where he lives in, in the Northwest, it was exactly that thing of like, right, I need to make a crate to ship this in because it's, it's plastic. It's going to go snap. Yeah. Um, I ended up using because I can get uh, plotter reels from work, which are just super thick, super dense cardboard tubes mm -hmm. um, for you know eight hundred and forty mil wide rolls of paper. It was just a case of like, right, I need you know it's three v twos, some scrap OSB, and then like pack the inside of this thing. And it was a case of like making it like a display frame for this thing to go into, and then just building everything around it. Mm -hmm. But it, that was like almost the first comment back from him when it when it arrived was God, it's a really nice box. We really use that for something else. I'm like, yeah, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I spent, I think it took me as long to make like the the sculpting the tube to take the sword and then making the box. It took me about as long as it did to put the bloody sword together. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> Less than yeah. no, the three D printing is interesting. I, I do, um, I do like, I do like some of the things that get are getting printed these days. Like they're especially with the quite smooth finish that a lot of them are getting as well. It is mm. mesmer, mesmerizing to watch. Yeah, especially once you start looking at the resin prints and stuff. Some yeah. of the, the detail is just ridiculous. Yeah. And some of the multicolor stuff that's coming out now, like the bamboo. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I still don't um, quite understand how they get multi the multicolored ones. So Witchcraft. Yeah, um, it's got a bit. coding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, a friend of ours, who's future podcast guest, hopefully, um, Isaac. He's uh, doing some ridiculous miniatures to go inside D twenty dice. Um, and he's sort of 3D printing these little dioramas and painting them all up and then casting them inside dice. And uh, he was showing us the other day this little tiny, tiny little figurine that he'd done with a bow and a bowstring. Wow. And it was it was in the in the region of like, you know, he was talking about the, the resolution of the pixels that the printer would print and the bowstring being in the region of, of pixels on a 4k screen mm -hmm. for how tiny it was and it was you know you, see, you can't touch the thing because it will just you know the bowstring would just explode and disappear you know it was, it was crazy crazy yeah. thing you know we're talking you know it, you would measure the dude in millimeters yeah that was going into this thing you know yeah it's, yeah That's just crazy, too, crazy too, too precise for my stupidly big hands yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just manhandle it into shape or hit it with a big mallet. Then it's... <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's where you have robots. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 
Uh, it, it, it's really pretty something you'd thought about getting into. Are you going to stick to it? Mind. I wouldn't mind. I mean, there's some of the things that would be that would be helpful, like because like, a lot of the it's just like, like tool holders and things like that would be quite mm. would be quite uh, it's quite good for it. But no, I mean, I, I I think my next I wouldn't mind getting a little CNC. Um, mm. Only only mainly to do like personalization on stuff because like yeah. if you've got two hammer two Etsy listings for hammers and you've got a personalized option. 90% of the time that person's going to go for that because they yeah, can get yeah. their logo on it or things like that. So there's a few, there's, that was my, my goal for last makers was to buy, to buy that, but that didn't happen. So maybe I'll try this year um, mm. and, and have a look at a CNC this year, but no, just, I just want a little one. I don't need anything stupidly big, just a little one just to put a mallet head under and then I'm done. Fun. So, or an axe head. I'm, or oh. an axe head. Yeah. Just, just something. Cause the giant, one i wanted to cnc the top but i couldn't find anyone to get it underneath the cnc because it was you know stupid to uh, yeah, yeah, course, yeah. yeah yeah so i had to get someone to cut to cnc the logo and then i inlaid it into it but it just i mean it looked right but it didn't look the best if it was a proper one it would have looked better but the because i'm because I, I bodge a lot of things together it's like well i could <laughs> You know, rather well, before I glue it together, I could get it CNC. But then there's no guarantee that that's going to be the middle <laughs> when, I, when I buy a time I finish. So it's like, oh, okay, yeah, close enough. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, but no, that would be cool. I wouldn't mind that. Or a, la a laser would be interesting as well. Mm. So I know the glue, the glue box does some lasering stuff for me, which is very nice of him. Um, but again, he's. Yeah, because he's away. got Andy's got quite a big. Uh, was it Trotter? Something with T. Uh, yeah, I can't remember what it, but it's it's a it's a big beast of one. It's yeah. a proper it's a proper full size. Yeah. Uh, similar sort of size to the one that Dean Woods has got. Mm -hmm. Okay, like a Trotech, is it? That's it, Trotech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, he went to yeah. the factory, I think, didn't he, for that one? When he he got spent a, a day up there or something, I think. Factory when he bought it, I seem to remember that might be mm. correct. Yeah, mm. and they're, they're they're very impressive what they can do and like the things they can cut. But I mean, even it, just just the templates alone for for that would be helpful. Yeah, rather than trying mm. to eyeball it. So, because like for, for the sword, I need to make. Ideally, I'd like to make a template, but I mean, a paper one will do me. I just need to find someone that can print six foot. So, <laughs> Which is going to be interesting, but I think I know I know a guy. I think so. We might have to have a chat. Right. <laughs> I was going to say you have the glue sticks. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then you got to line them up, and I'd have a, a sword that looks more pixelated than anything else. <laughs> Slightly offset off off of one bit. And... Yeah, well, it pr prints one bit. Yeah, it's like one bit's like this wide, and then the next bit, the supposed to join to it, is this wide, and then the next one is like even wider, and then it's good. Yeah. So, uh, woodgears.ca, Matthias Wandel, he's got uh, a bit of software called Big Print, mm -hmm. and it's it's a couple of quid, but it's um, the idea is you can feed it like a PDF or whatever, or feed it your your design, and it will it will cut it all up into your designated paper sizes oh, really? and it does cross lines and stuff mm -hmm. so the idea well, is you, you know you it. just set it set it to a4 it figures out how many a4 sheets it would be and then it has all the overlapping lines and things so you just print them all out trim to the edges and then it's it's That's really easy to line it all up and, and get it spot on there's a free one as well uh which i can't remember the name of now which can be used in a variety of different ways i used it a few times when i wanted to make uh really big posters to go on like a mm -hmm. my classroom wall so it would take but basically you could take any image um but it would scale depending on what you had it wouldn't necessarily scale nicely because it can obviously become blurry but if depending if it was the right sort of image you could actually generate well, i think the biggest i would printed was some like 30 or 40 sheets of a4 that then got joined into one wow. giant Thing, mm. took, took, yeah, took the entire display board 
Um, wow. And again, you kind of you cut to a line on one, uh, then it would sort of line up, or you'd cut to the lines and it would just line up. I can't mm. remember what it's called now. It's been around for a long time. Yeah. And it's just one of those, yeah. it's one of those sort of simple, um, it's just almost like a simple web page. Somebody designed years ago as a bit of a project and it's just kind of like, just does the job. There's no messing with it. The way it's been designed, it'll just keep going forever. As long mm -hmm. as they keep hosting it, it'll just kind of always work type things. Yeah. yeah. So it's all this kind of stuff. But it makes me feel ridiculously privileged to work in a building that has access to, or that, that has a, an A note plotter. You know, <laughs> like we've, we've done stupid shit like that, like mm -hmm. printing out full sized photos of people. You know? <laughs> That we then had, it was, um, yeah, we sort of placed it because it was, it was a color print then of a full sized person that we then placed on the floor outside the boss's office to dry mm -hmm. and and didn't tell him. So then he wandered out, opened the door, and saw someone he recognized laying in, in the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, it's, you know, it has didn't step on it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that could be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Giant carpet with somebody's face on. Yeah. Uh, well, you see, you see that on the uh, on TikTok as well. All these people making these massive rugs and things with projectors. That's mm. that's very impressive. That, that would work for that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, as long as it was someone he liked, it was fine. <laughs> So that's an interesting shot, actually, though, using a using a projector, because you could then at least just scale it how you want anyway, couldn't yeah. you? Yeah, because I, I want to be quite accurate. I like I know I like big, but like it, my dad's really looking forward to me making some of the historical weapons, and I want it mm. to be quite accurate to sizes and things like that. Yeah. So it's you know it's one of these ones where yeah something like that if I can you know use programs like that. It's not anything I've done before, so it'd be a good another little, another little string to the bow to, to use. So, mm. yeah, that was the uh, James Wright this week was talking about the use of uh, calipers in the woodworking workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think it's a, yeah. If you're going down, if you're going to become a, a woodsmith, then yeah, calipers will end up being the way to go. Yeah, yeah, I've got. I, I nicked them for my dad. So he owns an engineer. <laughs> he owns an engineering company, and I, I, when I went in there one day, I was like, "Ah, oh, thanks." <laughs> I'm pretty sure he saw me, but he might not. Have. I'd like to think he didn't. But <laughs> I've nicked quite a few things from him. Actually, he never asked. Well, I say that he never asked for them back. So. <laughs> yeah, I suppose if he doesn't know that you've got them, that might um, <laughs> that might help with that. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's sacked three apprentices, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, he can't sack me, though. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you don't work there anyway, then that's, yeah. there's no problem. Yeah, yeah exactly. I was going to say. If he it... listens to this, uh, then he's got no evidence. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just, just going to suggest, you know, depending on what type of engineer he's got, has he got any machines that might be useful for, for your... Well, annoyingly, yes. after I finished making the giant mallet, he did say, well, you could have asked me to do that. And I said, well, yeah, but yours are metal machines, not wood. I thought that was different. And he went, no. So, like, oh, okay, thanks. Well, wood's thanks. just soft metal. Yeah. <laughs> just just to anger the uh, the wood folks and the, uh, and the blacksmiths in the, uh, in the chat. Yeah, yeah he's, just... he's, been, he's been really helpful with a lot of the stuff that I've, I've done. Like, he... Um, I can't remember what it was, but I had a secondhand machine. It's, it's gone now, um, but it was had a cast iron top, and he resurfaced the top for me on, on his nice. giant thing, which was really good because it was beaten up. So that was that was really good. And I, I think I sold that for a profit actually, which is quite good. Mm. That's a useful facility to have, isn't it? Yeah, mm. and you kind of got some really a bit beaten up. Yeah, get the machined off. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Especially if you're not having to pay for the for the service as well. Well, wherever there's a bill coming eventually. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Thirty five years of of work, you know. <laughs> well, here, here's your bill. Oh, thanks. 
I own your company now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but here, Dad, is an historically accurate <laughs> insert name of particular sort yeah. that he likes. Yeah, what would you, you like? <laughs> I can remember, we had, we had my, when, when I was quite young, we had, my dad came home one day with a cavalry sabre. Oh, really? Yeah. It was really, we, we kept it for a while, but then we, need, we, need, we needed the cash and he ended up selling it for probably hardly anything for what it was worth. And it was in really good condition. But I can remember visiting a castle, I think it was Pembroke Castle, and they had a display there of kind of swords. It was just like, that's the same one, and that's not in very good condition. It's got really? to be like, yeah, it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, cavalry sabers are quite ornate. Of the, the yeah, are really mm. ornate. So. Yeah, yeah, and the blades engraved, and mm. yeah, it's not a flat blade either. You've got no, of... no. I need to work on my Dremel skills before I do that. My, my Dremel skills aren't so good. I need Kaz and Phil to teach me. So yeah but but again you were talking about sort of templates earlier you know, would something like with if you're trying to make say a a, a fuller down the mm -hmm. edge of a blade if you had a template and then because with the, the a dremel you can get that kind of almost like a router attachment yeah, yeah so you, you could almost use the router attachment combined with a template Mm -hmm. to basically take out all the kind of the vagaries of the human arm out of the yeah, process. That is going to have to be a big part of what I do with it is, is getting that things like that. Yeah. The templates and everything and the, the right. Cause I, I used in a, an engraving bit that I on Ollie's sword that I shouldn't have used but it was small enough to work. So it's like, well, I've got nothing that would fit it properly. Mm. So I think it was designed for like glass and like um, plastic and things like that. But because I was taking off such a small amount of wood, I went slow enough and it, it worked perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Was, yeah. I, I can hear people in the back of my head going, definitely don't do that. Definitely don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if it did, it, yeah, but if, if it, if it, what's the phrase? If it's stupid, it's not stupid, it works, it works. it's not stupid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, I mean, a lot of stuff I think a hobbyists often do is kind of not necessarily ideal. But I see a lot of people, professionals, do stuff. You kind of think, yeah, that's not the proper way of doing it either. You see a lot of stuff yeah. on YouTube that so you look at it and go, yeah, I'm not, I'm not touching that. Well, like, that's, the, that's the philosophical and ethical question, though, isn't it? Is, you know, if you've got a professional who's trained and knows how to break the rules properly is that any better or worse than someone who doesn't know any better yeah but comes to the same conclusion yeah do as i say but not as i do yeah yeah, mm. yeah. you know yeah you might be trained in something different and have an understanding of you know or, or risk assess it enough to to yeah take that chance i mean it's only especially with woodworking most of the time it's your your limbs you're putting at the line so if you feel you're doing it safely you know it, someone might, else might not think it is but you know if you think you're doing it safely and you've taken the precautions but then should you allow other people to see that no exactly that's the problem that's the mm. problem like you see it a lot in the comments of oh you haven't got your is it the crown guard on and mm. especially like taking the riving knife out and stuff like that and it's just like no i understand that but I'm only, you're seeing one shot of what I'm doing. The other 12 cuts that I'm doing has all that on. You're just not seeing it. We, we I all saw, it shot. we all saw Norm Abrams growing up, you know, mm. it was, he would have that little note on the thing, you know, the, the please be aware the crown guard has been removed for filming purposes only. You know, yep. you'd get that kind of always read the, the manual and follow the safety precautions and, yeah. Have all the safety features fitted and working and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of a lot of people are putting that in like their comments and things now and in in the descriptions, you know, disclaimers, yeah. this is purely entertainment purposes, not not a tutorial mm. or anything like that. And uh, maybe just need like, like a hashtag do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> 
get it on a t-shirt yeah because <laughs> <laughs> i've got my my neighbor wants to make a mallet um he, well, he wants one of my mallets and i said well you can make it if you want you know saves me making it you know i'll show you what to do and he's like yeah, that's great. I said, but you know, you, you you're at your own risk still. You know, it, I'll I'll be mm. here and I'll tell you how to do it safely. But if anything goes wrong, it's, you're still at your own risk with it. But I'm slightly worried about my liability with that. But we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's fairly good, so it should be fine. But you yeah, know, just, I mean, just I, don't I film it. You'd be fine. Yeah. Oh no, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's put it all over all, all over YouTube. Yeah. What not to do? <laughs> it, it. I mean, it's a tricky one. Yeah. And. I, I find this with kind of going to the men's shed and kind of, you know, there's that whole kind of thing when you're in a community workshop. I mean, we've got a system where each machine, there are a number of people who are allowed to authorize other people to use the, those machines. And they, you know, they have mm -hmm. to ensure that people have had the necessary training uh, or have had or have the necessary understanding of how to use a machine before they are allowed to use one of the machines. But of course, there's also that kind of, like I mentioned, where the majority of people, I'm, I'm the youngest by at least 15 years. Um, so there's kind of also kind of, yeah, you know, some people, yeah, you know, tools are a fairly new thing to them. Uh, and some, just, they only turn up for a coffee and a biscuit or bacon and roll on a Tuesday. Yeah, you know, they're not interested in the workshop. And then there are other people who've kind of, yeah, you know, been working with, yeah, you know, they've, they've got their own workshops. Yeah, you know, they maybe don't have maybe the space or, some of the tools but they've they've had them in the past and they've I mean, some of them are you know, there's one guy yeah he's an ex professional he was a carpenter for many years he trained as he apprenticed as a carpenter mm -hmm. um but yeah you know, like he says yeah you know, I've, I've never used one of these machines yeah yeah you know, pointing to you know, something like a a router table or a, even the table saw yeah you know, he, he, he'd never had a table saw on on because of the carpentry he did do a lot of things like roofs and things like that it's all done with a hand saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, or, or, yeah. or a circular saw. Yeah, but but not a, wouldn't have wouldn't have had a, a table saw. You know, even a contractor's one. Yeah, it's all yeah. done. Yeah, mostly with hand saws. Mm -hmm. And yeah, sometimes see, I've, there's a couple of times where he's grabbed a hand saw to do something. It's like I could I could have done that for you in you know, less than a minute on the table yeah. saw. And he's there, yeah, for sort of three or four minutes cutting away with a hand saw. Because that's what he's most comfortable with, but because then you get people who kind of like um, some are very nervous for other people using the tools. Mm. Yeah, it's like I, when I was Rightly using the band, so. I was using the band, I was using the bandsaw one day, and yeah, my hands were basically locked on. The, I was cutting something quite small, so my hands were basically locked on this cast iron table. So there, there was no distance. My fingers would not reach the blades. And I was basically using my fingers to push this piece of wood through. But from the viewpoint of one of the other members, it looked like my fingers were too close to the blade. Yeah. I was very calm. Awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy using it. I think I'm much happier using a bandsaw nowadays than I am a table saw. Because mm. especially that particular, it's on a, a mobile stand. It's actually slightly higher than most people would probably have their bandsaw. But for me, mm. the perfect height, the perfect height for me, my arms and for just the, my height and not having to bend over or it's a table saw i have to bend over because it's it's that much lower so for me the band saw is a much more comfortable machine to use and i'm i'm happy using a band saw yeah, yeah i don't see yes it is very dangerous i mean that, that the whole history of band saw they're designed for meat cutting mm -hmm. um yeah. with the bone still yeah so yeah they're they're, they're powerful machines it's a particularly it's an old sort of German uh, bandsaw. It's it's a nice piece of kit, but he was quite worried for me, you know, because it was a sort of thing. Yeah. it's like yeah, yeah. But actually, no, I'm, I'm no way. Yeah, my fingers are not going to be cutting that blade. Yeah, at one point, my hand, my one hand was actually behind the blade. So well, that that's actually that's even safer because mm -hmm. you, you you can't cut yourself on the back of the blade. Yeah, it can hurt. Yeah. It can hurt. Yeah, but you're not you're not going to take your finger off and say if you push it at the front of the blade. Um, assume you've got the blade the correct way around, of course. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's that it's that kind of you know where where's this liability? Right. Yeah, and it's you got to think like okay, okay, where's where's the yeah? How do we have something? Yeah, how do you keep, sort of maintain? We've had a few people coming in who setting up sheds in other parts of the county. They kind of. Like, but one sort of come in and go, 
well, how do we make sure that people are safe to use it? Yeah, that's the tricky part, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you, 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 you're going to need to find somebody who knows how to use these machines, mm. and they have to be confident to be able to be able to then show other people how to use the machines. Yeah, and train them to be safe. And but you still essentially at the end of the day have to have that thing saying, okay, we've we've given you some training. Yeah, you have said you are happy with that. Yeah, we you can't really go down the line of right okay yeah you've had some training now you've got to do a written exam and a practical exam before we let you use it <laughs> i mean maybe in an ideal world that 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 would be what you would do but yeah you know, it's, it's people would go well i can't be bothered then yeah you know, i'm not doing an exam but but yeah, yeah actually sort of show, yeah having yeah you've got to go right okay are you happy with that okay you do a cup now or you do a you, know, you cut a mortise with the, the bench mortiser or you know it's put a, a chamfer on this with the, the router table. Okay, looks like you're okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go for it now. And, but there's still that element of then, yeah, are they going to be safe down the line? Yeah. Yeah, because you can't constantly monitor every, you know, there's too many machines and too many people to kind of constantly be monitoring every single cut they do. Mm. So they have to accept that's kind of sort of part, you know, part of this I thought to say, yeah, I've had some training, I've been authorized to use this, but I have to take responsibility for how I'm doing that and using it. You can only do what's reasonably practical, can't you? You can't, you can't babysit them. You, they have to yeah. try at some point. I mean, I, I'd never used a table saw until I got one. So yeah, I mean, I read all, read all the manuals, I looked up loads of videos, and you know, and it's, yeah, you just take it one cut at a time and. Was it Steve Ramsey always does his um, his dry runs first? And yeah, I've, there's when there's been some trickier cuts, I've always done done that. Yeah, it's not like the first table saw I had when I attached a circular saw to the underside of a table. I did that with a with a door. No, with with, with a, a desk. With a mm -hmm. with a desk, an old school desk. Um, I very quickly went no. Yeah, I, I think I think not. <laughs> It was when I sat there and went, how do I make a fence for this? Wait, why am I trying to make a fence for this? <laughs> yes. We, we very quickly get the cut finish that we needed to get done. Then we put all of it in the bin and uh, forget that we ever tried this. <laughs> yeah, let's see. I, I, I've never tried that particular one. I don't like circular saws particularly. Mm. I love my track saw, which is essentially a plunge saw. That's yeah. much nicer, much safer to use. But the whole thing, certainly with the, the circular saws I've always used, yeah, actually sort of getting the, the guard to sort of the number of them where it would kind of, yeah, it, particularly the guards on the other side. So I've got to hold, I'm right-handed, but the yeah. guard levers on the right-hand side. Over. So I've got to reach over mm. or do I try and just pull it back a little bit at the bottom, which is even worse because you can't really see what's happening. Uh, it's just like, no, I'm happy not to. I still have a circular saw, but I would only use it for kind of where I want to cut something that I wouldn't want to use my plunge saw on. Mm. Yeah, mine's sat on the shelf up there and hardly ever comes out. To be fair, I don't use my track saw that much anymore either. Not, not when I've got the table saw built into the workbench now. So I've got big space to use. So it's sometimes easier just to sort of run anything through that now, but mm. yeah, I'd like to. Uh, I like. I'm probably going to get rid of my table saw because I just can't use it because the sinkage is so small. I've got to take it out onto the patio. That's always difficult. So I, I kind of don't like bending over anymore. Particularly, and it's it's not a very good table saw either. Mm. Um, unless you're looking to buy it, in which case, it's a brilliant table saw. Um, <laughs> But if anyone's looking to buy a table saw, yeah. there's two options because I'm going to get rid of mine as well. Oh, really? But <laughs> yeah. Which one have you I mean, got? I've got the Draper one with the sliding carriage and everything. So a cast iron top. Yeah. Oh, my, mine's an aluminium top. It's a, it's a, it's no name. It, it's <laughs> just got some like universal table saw one as the kind of label 10 inch. Yes. See, I've so got one of those. You want a cheap table saw? I want one, so. <laughs> 
But I like I, I mean, a, a nice table saw is it is I think I mean, they've got a Metabo at, at the men's shed and it's 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 really quite nice here you know, as the table saws go. But I caught is the I Metabo really, that is that similar to the same sort of size and shape as the lumberjack one? Yeah. yeah. And you've got you've kind of got you've got a sliding uh sort of the, the side the part of the right hand side will slide out on a couple of rods. Mm -hmm. To extend, I can't remember if the left does as well. Uh, there's a piece that extends out the back to um, to just a bar. So if you're putting something out a bit longer, so it'll give a bit more support. Uh, the fence, the fence is okay. It's not as nice as the it's the Dewalt that's got the really nice fence, isn't it? That's that's okay. what I've got at the moment. The job site Dewalt, and yeah, the fence is amazing on it, but it's so underpowered and it's so loud it's ridiculous yeah so, uh, that's what i'm finding what i'm finding now is i'm starting to outgrow everything yeah so, uh, i need mm. a cast iron table top table saw that yeah has a bit more power and a little bit quieter and things like that and yeah it's just starting to outgrow some of the stuff now that i you know, three years ago like was the, yeah i'd quite like to go the mft track saw approach that peter millard and and now yeah. leo from mp uh, handicraft has has gone because that's really nice yeah that gives you so much flexibility if you've got the right kind of sort of jigs and, and things to go with it mm. um and we're, and with all the safety of the track saw as opposed to mm -hmm. the kind of the you know, sticky up blade yeah yeah no i think the next uh, next on my list i'd like a proper jointer planer that's that's the next probably the next big purchase i'll make so it's just I don't know where to put it. I think I'm going to have to get rid of my big lumber cart, wood, timber, whatever you want to call it. Timber, wood, <laughs> lumber, I don't know. Um, I've got, got a massive one that's like oh, I could fit a full 8 by 4 sheet on, but I don't deal with sheet goods anymore. You know, when I was yeah. planning on building furniture and things like that, I, was, I needed it, but now I don't. It's all small stuff. So I think mm. I might dismantle that one and go down that route. Sounds like a plan. Somewhere. So if anyone's looking for a, a big trolley, <laughs> <laughs> you'll you'll need a big like Luton to take it. But <laughs> we, we should do well, that like this, this, you know, a, a new segment on the podcast for shit we're getting rid of. And this just, just anyone who's listening who knows anyone who wants a, a cheap table saw and a and a half decent table saw and yeah. a, is getting rid of a big jointer but wants to maybe swap it for a. A sheet card. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, that could be fun. I've got so much stuff I need to get rid of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kids don't count, Abby. Can't get rid of those. Yeah. Record, can have a record length. <laughs> record length episode. I start listening to things I need to get rid of. <laughs> I don't have so enough room keep to these. Them. Everything else can go. Yeah. <laughs> uh yeah started I, I signed up for a I, I say signed up i i kind of put my name onto an email thing so they'd send me the pdf of a chart which is to get rid of 2023 things in the year 2023 that's kind of just it's basically it's 2023 boxes does, does pennies count because i get rid of them a lot <laughs> Uh, you can. Uh, the, the, I mean, the, the beauty of it is you can get rid of anything you like. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, if you want to get rid of it, you can. Anything can be decided. So yeah, if, if you swap had a... it for something now. <laughs> got, I got rid of a pound, but I swapped it for this instead. <laughs> well, you could get rid of the receipt for whatever you just bought. That's true. <laughs> if the receipts are taking up space and you need to get rid of them, then yeah, yeah, why not? Mm. There's, there's, there's no hard and set rules about it. Unfortunately, so far, it, you know, 15 days in, I haven't actually. I don't. I'm not counting stuff that would could be, you know, rubbish. So yeah, we had a few throat sweets this evening. I'm not counting the wrappers for the throat sweets. I got know, rid of a, a bladders like... full of uh, <laughs> excess bodily fluid. Or, you know. <laughs> No, that's when you get to the end of the end of the sheet, and it's like I'm running out of stuff now. <laughs> I'm sat in an empty house. I've got rid of everything. Oh, I could trim the beard. That means my hair to get rid of. 
Uh, if I emptied everything in the house, it'd be a lot more than 2023, I'll tell you that now. You've got the next four or five years worth of stuff <laughs> queued up there, really. Yeah, just in books. Yeah. <laughs> got rid of page uh, one. <laughs> page three and four. <laughs> So you just tip a bag of rice on the floor or something. Yeah, that works. <laughs> I got the next seven years sorted. Yeah. The, yeah. The, 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 the challenge thing that goes with it is kind of these, there's a set of sort of FAQs. And I'm kind of one of these. Well, yeah, have, what counts as one item? Yeah, it's like if you have a a, a stamp collection, you decide to get rid of it. Yeah, does that count? If it's in one, you've got one album, does that count as one album? Or does it count as the 4,000 stamps that you've got inside that album? And basically, say, well, it's up to you. Yeah. Oh, leeway. That's not good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's the thing, though, isn't it? Is, you know, like if you, if you, if you were to go and buy the thing and describe the unit that it comes in, you know, like a bag a of kettle of chips. Yeah. A box of screws, a bag of kettle chips that, you know, the bag of kettle chips, as we've already established, is one serving. So it is, yep. you know, one yep. thing to dispose of. The, the box of screws is a box of screws. A bag of rice is many, many things you can individually get rid of. Mm. <laughs> I mean, that, that serves us when we want it to serve us, though. Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> That's yeah. the only problem. <laughs> so did you eat that entire bag of chocolate? No, it was just one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, just the one serving. It, yeah, yeah, the individual bag was the serving, is it not? Yes. And I, as blokes have been trying to establish for years, you know, a quick pint is four or five. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I thought a quick pint was just a couple, whereas a, a couple of pints is four or five. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, a, a quick pint is two or three, and then yeah. a couple of pints is sort of four or five, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Going for a few is... Your more. your body mass in uh, in liquid, <laughs> or your height in sub sandwiches. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good callback. <laughs> oh, I, I just uh, the question. I mean, question: If you were going to do your own height in in subways, would you go for the same combination each time? Well, would you try and the get them to make it in, in, there, yeah. in one whole bench? Of, uh, just make it as one whole sandwich. Mm. Like the, the American style big hoagies or whatever they are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, as soon as I eat the same thing in there every single time, it would have to be. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, we're remember, coming back to I mean, food now, though. This is a problem. <laughs> we, well, we are. I remember going in there with someone years ago, and, and they were a particularly fussy eater. And they basically just wanted cheese on the sandwich. So it was it was the whitest of white bread that you have, and then just cheese on it, please. And the the, the poor subway sandwich artist or whatever they're called these days it was just completely baffled by this concept mm -hmm. of like, not not toasted, no no salad, no other actual fillings, no no <laughs> flavor, <laughs> just, no I just like just I some of the, you for this. yeah some of the rubber cheese on. Some of the white bread, please. At least add some crisps into that. Yeah. <laughs> Cheese and crisp sandwich. Well, so if you're going yeah. to do that, it has to be salt and vinegar crisps, though. Yeah. I'm with you there. What, yeah. Already salted as a yeah. as a fullback. Uh, I'm not a fan of already salted crisps. Do you prefer so the ones be... you put the salt in yourself? No, oh god, they were they were oh it was such a pain when they came out. Um actually not when they came out because it was before well, they were first, yeah. Out, but yeah, but... they were the pre pre sliced bread of uh of crisps. Yeah, the unsliced bread of crisps, probably. No, I'm not I'm, I'm not a fan of really salty crisps. Any other flavour. All other mm, flavors. I, I agree with you there, yeah. I I think there's I think there's delight in the simplicity of a really salty crisp. A good yeah. one. Yeah. See, it's like this this week we because uh, my 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 everyone else has packed lunches and they kind of have they've been having lately anyway packs of crisps 
they're all happy with really solid crisps. Which is me because I really shouldn't eat crisps. Really shouldn't. This last week, couldn't get the deliveries. Couldn't have. I could have one packet of ready salted multi pack six, which wouldn't be enough for the week. Actually, no, it was two, but that wouldn't be enough for the week. But okay, I'll just. The, you couldn't get giant thirty bag of ready salted, but you could get meat feast, which was kind of smoky bacon, beef and onion, cheese and onion. Not sure where that fit in with the meat, and ready salted and roast chicken. And it was just like, okay, that will do. It's like, I think yeah, if memory serves, there's only the, the cheese and onion crisps in there that aren't vegetarian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you can't, if you, and if, <laughs> yeah, if, if, if you, um, if you're, uh, but if you've got a dairy intolerance, I think you can have the cheese and onion crisps, but not the roast chicken. Yeah. Right. I think you're right. There. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Lactose in the flavoring, I think. Yeah. The problem with that is that all those flavors, apart from, I'm not a big fan of roast chicken, it's all right, but prefer it over ready salted. I won't eat ready salted crisps at all. They can have a million packets in the house. I will not touch a packet of ready salted crisps. The rest, yeah, that's been three or four packets of crisps a day for the last week. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie you know, warned me this morning. All, he, um, they went to Tesco's and got food for the week. And he goes, I've got some hula hoops, but there's only three packs of beef ones and you're not allowed them. And it's like, why not? <laughs> it's like, because they're mine. I want them from school. You want daddy. You're not allowed to take them. It's like, fine. Okay. It's fine. I'm a grown adult. I can go buy my own beef hula hoops. <laughs> so hula hoops, I, I'm a big fan of the big hoops. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Much more flavour on them. Yeah. Well, I'm not a fan of red hoops. Not ready fan of hula hoops the other day, the no. big hoops. Good. They're nice in tomato soup. <laughs> I, can, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Pour them in, bit of straw. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> Cheese sandwich with tomato soup. Do you remember oh, the yeah, mini yeah. hula hoops? This is going back they, a good few years. They, they really, they were like mini, mini ones. Salt and vinegar ones of them in soup were really nice because you got so many. Oh. Yeah, it'd be like, yeah, like croutons. it's like a crouton, isn't it? So, yeah, <laughs> I'm weird, all right. I know we established this in the in first soup. half. Yeah, chips and soup is nice, too, but I, actually, yeah, I, I have had soup as a sauce for the top of chips, yeah. But it has to be tomato though, so it can't be any other type for me. Mm. If broccoli and salt and soup I, on chips would probably be a bit weird. I used to sometimes when I was before I was married and cooking just for myself, I would sometimes have um I'd get noodles, ramen noodles, yeah, the kind of the, the super noodles. But I would always throw the packet away, the, the spicy packet, because I just don't really just didn't like them. And then I would have something like a, I'd get a tin of chunky soup. Mm. I'd use the tin of chunky soup as the sauce for the mm-hmm. noodles, and then throw in. Particularly if you can get like a chunky soup with some bits of meat in or something, and then throw in either some bits of meat or some chunks of cheese. And I basically have this sort that of works. bowl full of noodle soup. Yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah. you enjoy that. It's really nice. Mm. Can't really try that again. I have to eat rice noodles now, but. <laughs> Why the hell not? Yeah, yeah. Fine. I prefer to make my own soup now, but yeah, finding sort of good soup. We probably should start thinking about attention grabbers. Though. I was going to say, does that grab your attention? Yeah, that's that is grabbing my attention actually. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, some nice. <laughs> yeah, some noodle. Can't see the rest of the family go for it if I serve that up for dinner one night. Yeah, might not go Maybe down it's well. One of those perfect opportunities to send them out for a meal or something, so you can just <laughs> indulge in something that you want to indulge in. Go old school, yeah. 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 Probably sometimes we going old school, I have discovered that sometimes it just doesn't live up to the memory. <laughs> or you make mistakes. Like the last time, quite a few years ago now, before I was um, gluten and wheat intolerant, uh, I was going to be at home on the weekend. Everyone else was going to be away. And I called into the supermarket thinking, well, I'm here. 
I fancied a free bentos pie. <laughs> well, those ones in a tin. The American listeners, if you don't know a free bentos pie, look it up. Um, and I thought we used to have we used to have those quite regularly when I was kind of after I'd left university and was living at home with my dad. We used to have them quite regularly, half a free bentos pie each and a pile of peas. That would do nicely, maybe a few boiled potatoes. But I made the mistake of looking at the ingredients. I thought, ah, no, I'm not having that. And I thought, I know. He used to love as a kid. He used to have brains faggots with peas and mash. That was always the one I really enjoyed. And I made the mistake of looking at the uh, ingredients on that as well. And uh, ended up having something completely different. <laughs> Pizza, probably. <laughs> I did but have anyway. my first Fray Bentos pie recently. As a, as a, a point okay. of attention for me, really. Um, yeah. It was only well, last week or whatever. And I, I can't even remember what flavour it was now. But it was actually... It was, it was, obviously, it was a veggie one. Yeah, but it was it was delicious. Well, that's, that's my my first dip in a toe. In, well, I didn't dip my toe into it. Dip me fork into it. But, <laughs> um, you know, my first time trying a, a fray bentos pie. So that's you know, but a good experience for me. But from everyone else, it seems to be that yeah, you clearly crack. didn't look at the ingredient list. That's the oh no, I wasn't that stupid. Yeah, I, I'd learned yeah. from when you told me the story of you looking at the ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> uh I looked at the right. flavours on the front, and that was it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just look at the top. Look at the top. That's fine. Yeah. Just don't look at the bottom. Yeah. So, our attention grabbers. Anything that's been grabbing uh, attention? With you think whether that's things you've been watching, reading, uh, listening to, whether it's something you're working on, have worked on, can be the past or can be the future, uh, or of course the present. Well, kind of the present here now, but so quite can. Uh, Paul, as it can be more than one thing as well. So, Paul, what's been grabbing your attention lately? Uh, I've uh, over the last couple of weeks, I've been going down a Damascus rabbit hole of mm. looking at different Damascus patterns and uh, mm. watching lots of like Alex Steele and other guys making some very very pretty Damascus knives and all the lovely different like star patterns and sunburst patterns and things like that and thinking how do i make this out of wood <laughs> which is the which is going to be my next big challenge so Are you yeah. with michael arm? Oh, michael arm no not had that one Ooh, i'll i'll send you a link i think I, mm. i'll have to double check the sort of spelling um yeah i think damascus but plywood oh oh yeah 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 that's a good idea mm. But yeah, so I've been I've been watching hours and hours and hours of people watching of making buoy knives and camp knives and swords of of so many pretty things that I want but can't have. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I can't I, I can't get enough of watching things like that on YouTube. It's mm. it's very much a, a um I can't think what word I'm looking for. Guilty no, pleasure. Cool. Yeah, good, thank you. It's very much yeah. a guilty pleasure of mine of, of seeing all the pretty things that they can make from just random bits of metal, it seems. But, but yeah, that's that's my main little thing at the minute. Nice. I think I think that the, there's a few ways that it could be done in wood. We'll have a chat afterwards. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've think got a couple of, of couple of suggestions. It's yeah. I think yeah. something like, you know, like the um crazy pattern end grain chopping boards people do i yeah. think something like that would be would be an interesting way of doing it and i'm tempted to use some resin as well because you can do like the canister damascus something like a canister like a canister sort of head mallet Ooh. would be quite yeah. cool with oh, literally cool, yeah. just slim fits slithers of random wood that i've got in the shop um of yeah. different colors and things and then with just some clear resin going through it would be quite cool Mm. So, so yeah, some interesting or well, coloured resins things. could produce an interesting effect resin, yeah. as well. Yeah. Mm. So, Ooh, fun. yeah. That that that's yeah. That could be fun. Sounds good. Because yeah. I've only I, I did Google it, and there's only one video I can find of wooden Damascus on YouTube, and it's done with resin and very and like um, shavings, like hand plane shavings. But mm. it's it's effectively you're making plywood, aren't you? So yeah. it's just how I can do that slightly differently. But well, my brain, yeah, that's yeah. all my brain's been occupied with recently. <laughs> Very focused, yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. Oh, I think I think there's some possibilities. Mm. But there's, there's some definite possibilities. Yeah. 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 I think it, some of it will depend on the kind of choices of materials and things. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. It does sound like fun. Mm. I'm quite looking and, forward to it. So. And again, like that, I mean, that's got the potential as well for lots of variation. Which, yeah. of course, yeah, if you can get that into a good form in videos, that mm. will build an audience. It's because then you've got, oh, I'm now making a this type of sword, which I've made before, but this time I'm using Damascus. Yeah. It's not going to be exactly the same video, just with different material. It'll be a different video. But then I'll have something similar to what I've made before because I'm familiar with that manufacturer. And I've got a jig, maybe. Yep. But now it's going to look different because it's there. And then yep. it's available for people to purchase off Etsy or eBay. <laughs> yeah, I think a, um, a, a Damascus cake knife would be quite cool. Like this, mm. So if I make a lot of it, yeah. Our good buddy Steve House has a fantastic video on making a wooden, like, layered veneer, so like mm -hmm. more like a San Mai rather than Damascus, but um, wooden cake knife. Oh, cool! So I'll have a, a look fantastic that one. video from a while back. Mm. Yeah, I'll have a look at that one. That's very cool. Mm. That sounds good. Mm. Jamie, what about you? What's been grabbing your attention? I think I'm about to steal uh, yours or one of yours, Andy. Matt Gray uh -huh. has yep. done a wonderful, wonderful little video um, in making a little. Would you say it's an epic video? I'd say it's. An epic I would video. say it is. It is absolutely epic in its entirety. Um, taking uh, the satellite photos from the epic project, which are satellite photos of Earth. Uh, the the sunny side of Earth, um, and just bringing them into a little circular photo frame, essentially, oh, cool. um, that just refreshes and brings in the most recent satellite image from NASA. Yeah, and it's just a gorgeous little project, and he's mm. he's he's just a he's a, a lovely human anyway. So he's, he's excited and enthusiastic about it all, and it's just a it's a a, a lovely little video. So what it just constantly updates, does it? Yes, yeah, so they they take the photos um, every so often, um, and then like a couple of days later, those photos are then released mm -hmm. um, and available on the website. So uh, you know it's a couple of days out of out of date when they appear on the yeah. on the photo frame. But yeah, it just That's periodically cool. checks for the latest latest photo and pops it up. And because it's a little tiny circular screen. A little hyperpixel screen from Pimeroni. Um, it's then a circular image in a circular screen on like a little circular display uh, on his desk. You know, it's just a wow. It's a really lovely little project just to see this, you know, satellite image of, of where we live. Well, yeah, a little rock what in the globe. sky. <laughs> what a globe! Yeah, yes, exactly. That and bits of de well, bits of off-camera decluttering, getting rid of. I'm on a mission this year to try and get rid of crap that I've hoarded onto for too long. Um, I should be, I, I kind of should be on that mission as well. Um, kind of declared on the mission, but have not yet started. That's the first step, though. So, yeah. I, I'm I'm bringing in help. You see, so it's it's a lot easier to pick a box and then just take all of the things out of the box one by one and hand them to someone else with a statement of keep or bin. And then Ooh. that makes it so much easier to just go through it because mm -hmm. then you, you have a box that's on your lap that you can't move until you've emptied the box. <laughs> so that is your goal is just take the things out the box and somebody else does the sensible thing of taking them off you and then putting them to one side or the other. And then actually make progress with it so, yeah i would need somebody to then also remove them immediately from the house yes i'm yep. not just put them in the back of my car because otherwise i might go <laughs> you'd bring them all back yeah, in again yeah, yeah. Actually, that, one. Actually, that was actually really quite good i don't know why i got rid of that yeah yeah pretty much if you put them into then 
you know, uh, cardboard boxes that you can't see into and tape them shut. <laughs> <laughs> Chain them. Yeah, that, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Look, but the problem is I, I've got quite good spatial memory, so which things are in which boxes, generally. Yeah, that wouldn't so work. So you do okay. that and then drink half a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> and then shuffle them up. <laughs> yeah. Right, not the thing you wanted on the side. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, this is not the box you're looking for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, paint one gold, paint one white with blue bits. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you've How got a t-shirt you? design right there. Yeah. <laughs> Maker's waffle, not the box you're looking for. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we need to go through and, and just create all of the t-shirts you know we've we've crowdsourced band names and t-shirt designs in the uh ah oh, the, the number of episodes yeah. of this podcast yeah at some point we i really, need should. I really point. should yeah yeah just, i really should the teespring with random crap on it mm. well that's that's how i started on with um crosscut was doing their merch stuff didn't sell a single t-shirt but I made lots of them. I made so many t-shirts. Didn't sell a single one of them, though. <laughs> well, there we go. That's a project for this year, then, Andy. Then we'll have to uh, get yeah. Duncan roped in to, to make the website with the, 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 the band name generator. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, what we need for, to do uh, is plug, plug Maker's Waffle into chat GPT. The chat box, <laughs> chat GPT. <laughs> To extract and then the tell it to extract useful band names and <laughs> phrases. Well, li listen to the podcast, and when we come up with something and say that would make a good, then to create a website that has that thing in it. <laughs> we'll have a chat with him tomorrow. That'll, that'll uh, you might be asking a little bit too much there. Yeah. By the time you know it, it'll have evolved itself to that point. By the time we've got round to it. It's, 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 the podcast I used to listen to, it kind of morphed into a different podcast, changed its name. But when I first started listening to it, um, during the podcast, they would be, they somebody would come up with a phrase. And rather than going, oh, that made a good T-shirt, they would actually buy the URL. The, the, there'd be something <laughs> going, oh, that's available as a URL. And they would buy the URL. And then... Because they manif one of the things they made was a, a zine that, that, that mm. they, people wanted to buy, and they, they sell them quite a lot. They would sell them like a hundred dollars a piece, these zines, and they'd sell out whenever they did it. To find out how to get the zine, you had to go through some of these websites that they'd been oh, buying, nice. and it just basically <laughs> it was just like a, a, a breadcrumb trail to get to wherever they decided would be the final landing point for this yeah you know, to be able to order this in and they were sold out yeah it's just like absolutely nuts but they stopped doing they they, they they realized they were spending an awful lot of money behind these urls they kind of mm. went hmm yeah, yeah they kind of maybe stop doing that sort of thing and yeah yeah well, i suppose you, you could yeah yeah, it's it's probably not worth doing that. I suppose I mean it wouldn't be worth us doing that with Maker's Waffle of just yep. you know get get yeah. people to listen to every episode to then find the clues to. Uh... <laughs> We'd never sell anything. <laughs> yeah, no, I think we'll, we'll we'll skip that as a as a possible idea. Yeah, I don't think yeah, anyone reads the show notes. Never mind, follow it through. <laughs> We did that once, and we were, we were was it, uh, Dandles had the uh, the code word at the very end. Yes, I think two people responded. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, me too. <laughs> oh well. Well, Andy, what's been grabbing your attention, mate? Uh, mostly reading. I mean, I'm trying to get back into reading this year. Actual sort of books and things. Mm. Uh, so. A couple of days ago, I finished the book that you actually gifted me more than a year ago, uh, <laughs> Seven Eves uh, by Neil Stephenson. Fantastic. It was, it was in 2020. Uh, 
which was yeah it, it, was, it was a good book it's a good book i enjoyed it mm -hmm. the, the, it was a bit slow slow start partly for me and partly that i found this the, the start the first essentially there's three acts without giving anything away there's yes. three acts the first act the first half of the first act was quite slow i found it was um, a lot of slow world building I yeah think. yeah um second and third acts were were much better um, yeah I'll definitely agree with that. It's a shame. I'd, I'd love to see a sequel. Um, yes. Um, it would be nice following to see... Following on from the third act? Yeah, actually, I'd love to see two or... sequels. One following on from the second act and one following on from the third act. Yes. Yes, agreed. Yeah. Uh, I think it would make a good film. There's been talks about it being made into film, apparently. Um, well, originally, he, he pitched it as a, like a book, a TV series, a film, a video game. Hmm. A handful of other okay. things so that's why it is such a heavy dense book um, yeah it's because the, he's, he's added so much to it for all the various possible formats it would make a good be. tv series actually i think mm. that would be good probably better than film you can block more, a lot more out on tv series one kind yeah. Of yeah yeah um but it'd be expensive to build to make yes yeah, it's probably easier now with sort of the good uh, thing. Good so yeah, so that finished that uh, mm. started uh, Color of Magic, Terry Pratchett, the very first Discworld book. Uh, nice. I, ne I never, I never, I never read all the Discworld books. Uh, wasn't much more of a hitchhiker's sort of guy. Um, but I've, I've started back. I've, I've read a few of the Discworld books. And I'm, I'm basically gonna. I've started on Color of Magic, and I've got the next one and ready once i finish that and i will just keep buying them i'll probably need to mix with other books mm. i've got i've got 15 books i think on my bedside table on my to be read pile um so yeah i'd like to think i can i'm going to aim for maybe a 25 25 books this year um, nice i'd like to do 50 but yeah 25 a couple of the ones i've got i want to be read pile are quite thick Mm. So, uh, I don't know. See how it goes. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to read more, properly read books yeah. rather than kind of read it uh, and stuff. Yeah, rather than kind of on a Kindle or, or other sort of reader and that. Uh, apart from that, this following week, uh, as part of being in the mentorship, I'm going to be doing a first aid course, first time in about Yay. six or seven years, um, which could be fun. I'm you get to I, learn I, a new I, song. Well, <laughs> I have I have fun I have fun on on first aid courses. Um having been brought up basically on first aid as, as my, my dad was a I mean he, he, uh, he had his own company training first aid. Yeah, that was his kind mm. of sort of final sort of job. Um yeah, we grew up with first aid manuals all over the house. My both my parents were uh, they met because they were both nurses. My dad had been in the medical corps. Yeah, it's mm. like I grew up, you know, reading first aid books because yeah, just read every book that was in the house. Um, yeah, I helped write first aid courses for my dad when we were doing stuff. I've done so many. I was in a, a cave rescue and mountain rescue teams. I, I've done a lot of first aid courses. Um, so sometimes I like to. Uh, how should we? tease argue. the first the, the trainers <laughs> yeah argue might be another word yeah yeah be an ass <laughs> yeah um it, dep it depends on the attitude of the, the it's when they sort of turn mm -hmm. around and say something is definitive and then it's like for example as if you've done a first aid course within the last 10 years you'll know that the, the cpr they do they no longer teach rescue breathing no breathing rescue breathing has gone out Mm. And there's a number of reasons that rescue breathing was taken out of the kind of the, the resuscitation councils, whether it's European, American, or, or UK's kind of sort of teaching. Um, and one could argue they were good reasons. Now, some instructors will say, you don't do rescue breathing. Rescue breathing is not something you do. But I don't like that attitude because rescue breathing is something that is effective if you know how to do it and you have been trained mm -hmm. how to do it and mm -hmm. if you look at like the nhs website on the first aid thing on cpr they will say yeah if you know how to do rescue breathing 30 to 2 30 chest compressions two rescue breaths is a good thing to do 
if you know how to do it, if you know how to open an airway, if you know how to, to breathe sufficiently, uh, it's a good thing to do. Um, particularly, I've, I personally, I think it should be reintroduced, given the kind of big, the length of some of the waiting times we're seeing with the, the overstretched NHS at the moment. Yeah. Well, it's um, not going to hurt, is it? <laughs> not really. No, if you do no, it properly, it's, it's I mean, hurt, yeah. yeah. The, the, you're fairly safe if you're having chest compressions there's probably unless you're already hypoxic there's mm. probably 12 minutes 10 to 12 minutes worth of oxygen in your body if you're pumping that round that's good but if you're yeah if you're still doing chest compressions after 40 minutes and there's been no oxygen go, fresh oxygen going in but there have been plenty of cases of people doing cpr knowing what they're doing for an hour and saving people mm -hmm. without brain damage i suppose the 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 struggle there is if you're doing a day course in cpr or, or first aid in general you're expecting that the person isn't going to be you know practicing it regularly isn't going to be necessarily oh and annoying. totally and this is this is one of the reasons why it was if you know, if you had you know the average response time certainly sort of you know 10 years ago when it was stopped um, mm. Yeah, it was less than eight minutes for an ambulance, and you know people weren't confident. Some people wouldn't do it because they don't want to get all ucky and face to face, worried about infection. If you've got somebody that's been busted in the shops and they've got blood, you know, and you maybe don't have access to a, some sort of device that allows you to do that. You know, if there's the risk of somebody's one of the problems with doing sort of rescue breathing is it often leads to vomiting. Um, mm. particularly if you don't know how to open the airway cleanly, uh, but even if you do, there's a risk of some air going into the stomach. Um, and so yeah, there, there are issues with, you know, trying to do it or not trying to do it. So, and yeah, and, and one of the problems with first aid courses, is, you know, a lot of people, they do, you know, you do them once every three years. Yeah. Exactly. Like right, you, yeah. if you talk, if you talk to people who are actually working on you, know, like sort of thing, Basically, the, I, th I remember reading an article once because, yeah, again, my dad sort of doing this unprofessionally. It was just like we just stack after stack of you know, magazines and journals with kind of you mm. know, bits and bobs in. But pretty much most people forget the majority of their first day training that they've had on a day school within six weeks. In, in my experience, most people have only remembered the song after the first week. <laughs> And it's, it's usually that, oh, which song did they teach you then? You know. So, yeah, so which song, did, which song have, you, have you been to? You're talking for the rate of chest compression. Yeah, yeah. Because oh, it, it Nelly, is that kind of thing. Nelly back then. Nelly the other Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, yeah. I think every person I've uh, spoken to who's ever been on a first aid course has, has been taught a different song. I was going to say, the only, the only one I've ever been taught was Staying Alive. Because mm. yeah. it fits as well. Yeah. No, they, they change it up all the time. But yeah. I, I think it's one of those things, though, isn't it, is with, with stuff like that, if if you are trained and you do know what you're doing, then it's fantastic. Yeah. But that goes with everything. That's why you're doing a first aid course, because yeah, some a, a, a bit of knowledge and some guidance to say, do this or don't do this. Uh, and the, the, this is it. It's, it's, yeah... Nowadays, particularly with mobile phones, the ability to be able to kind of you know, dial 999, put your phone on speakerphone, and you'll have somebody who's got a nice mm. little chart next to them who will tell you exactly what you need to do, will try to keep you calm. Yeah, because yeah. if you're not used to it, it's very difficult not to keep you know, to, to keep calm. Yeah, if you're not this, used to this that is sort of thing. after you've posted the video to Instagram and TikTok and yep. YouTube, though. Yeah, yeah. Had it, we had a lovely art. There was a bunch of us on an outdoor first aid course on Dartmoor many, many years ago. Um, and it was the, it, it was the time where the, well, I mean, still the, the, the print, the basic principle nowadays is kind of, you know, as, oh, there's a problem, immediately dial for 999. Yeah. And it was like we were on this course so in this, uh, this uh, little activity center on Dartmoor, middle of nowhere. And it was like, this is the first thing. And this was, this was a relatively, this guy came out with it. And basically, it get, it's that kind of, you know, it was partially the attitude of which he came out with it. And he mm. basically sort of said, right, okay, you know, well, you know, somebody collapses, you're in the walk group, somebody collapses, you know, what do you do? And like, you know, like, 
oh, yeah, yeah, assess the situation, you yeah, look for any danger, you yeah, look for a response, check airway, breathing, circulation. And he basically said, nope, don't do any of that. You call 999. Yeah. And we were like, there were, there were a few of us who were very experienced outdoors people and very experienced outdoor instructor people. You know, done, yeah. I mean, at the time, I'd been an outdoor instructor working with kids for 20 years. Mm. And it was just like, yeah, I was like, if you if if you've been on Dartmoor, you, you, you know that there's many 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 places on Dartmoor you cannot get a mobile phone signal. So if yeah, you know, for example, and one of the other guys sort of said, yeah, yeah, such as which wasn't too far away, I can't remember it was now. So if you, if somebody collapses there, to get a signal, you're going to have to travel at least a mile mm. to get a signal. So if you're saying the, the the first thing we have to do is, and yeah, you know, yeah, we're talking about a situation where potentially there's only two people, we've yeah. got to go and call them. Basically, I'm just calling to say, yeah, there's the, can I please come and collect the dead body that's that these mm. reference. And obviously, it's a very tricky situation. You know what do you do? Yeah, if you're on your own, something like that collapse. Yeah, well, if you well, start doing CPR, just... you've got to hope that they actually kind of recover enough that you can then kind of go right now. I need to go and get some help. Or somebody and else depending on off. the situation, it might be a case of instead of you giving them a, a reference for where they can come and collect one body, it might be that they stumble across the pair of you. Yeah, and it's you know. it, it, it it obviously it's one of those situations where you can you can argue the toss and yeah, some of us were really arguing the toss because this guy just turned this attitude that we really didn't like. Um, and yeah, he obviously didn't have an understanding of what game. Now, obviously, if you're in a group with many people, you can kind of say, right, you two. Yeah. This is the grid reference we're at right now. You go up there, phone out, call 999, ask for mountain rescue. Yeah, you ask mm. police first and ask for mountain rescue. Um, and you tell them the, what the situation is. And you, you write down a piece of paper and you, you go. While somebody else is already doing kind of you know, an assessment yeah. and starting, you know, opening their way and doing things. Obviously, a very different situation when you've got a large enough group. But it's sometimes it's down to the attitude of the... I've, I've come across some brilliant first aid instructors over the years. Absolutely fantastic. And I've come across a few people that are just so up themselves. They basically mm. think that they're, they may as well be kind of the you know, Harley Street surgeons because they're so good. Um, I think you, uh, you did raise a good point there, Andy, with, um, with the language you used, you know, it, it, part of that kind of uh, crisis management of, you know, the, those kind of situations of, of that's something to, to bear in mind for, for anyone who's, who's ever listening. I know we're not, we're not actually giving you any sensible advice in terms of first aid or crisis management, but if you're ever in that situation where you are in a scene where there is a group of people and there is a major problem, you need to make sure that you're very specific and deliberate with the instructions that you give. Yeah. And that's something that a lot of people don't realize or don't appreciate or understand is that, you know, you don't say call an ambulance because in that moment you might have the presence of mind to see the situation for what it is and realize that an ambulance is needed. But the person you've given that instruction to, or, or even if there's a crowd of people surrounding you, you've picked someone up off the floor, you know, don't, don't just kind of nebulously say to people in the surrounding area, somebody call an ambulance. Yeah, pick, pick a someone. person. Yeah, pick pick a person and tell them what to do. Don't yeah. don't tell them to call an ambulance. Tell them to get their phone out. Tell them to dial nine nine nine. Tell them to ask for an ambulance. Tell them what they need to say. Because just because you've got that presence of mind to know what's going on in that situation, it doesn't mean that everyone else is as capable in that situation as you are. Yeah, and it's very very easy in those kind of situations to to lose that presence of mind and to just freak out or not know what to do or not know what order to do things in so if, you know if you're in that situation try and keep a grasp of that of give very yeah. specific deliberate instructions to a specific person to do a task rather than you know i mean you could start I, by I'm saying giving... everyone put your phones away turn yeah. your cameras off you know <laughs> I get, actually giving people giving people tasks to do is it mm. can be really good in terms of actually getting rid of some people but also yeah it, of, yeah, yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Can can you go and try and find something like a blanket? Can you get it? You know, on High Street. Yeah. Can mm. you go into that shop there and see if they've got a first aid kit? See if they've got a first aider. Yeah, yeah. and you yeah, actually give people sort of tasks. Yeah, in order to kind of you know, a, get some of your hair and be you know, generate a bit of space and and hopefully mm-hmm. also generate some help. Yeah. Nothing worse than being in a first aid situation when you're on your own. It's a lot easier if you've got somebody else with you, um, particularly if they know more. The yeah, yeah, yeah. If they know what, if they know, yeah. There, there, there used to be a, um, a lot of first aid manuals. There used to be some called the three P's. Yeah, where your basic principles were: yeah, you've got to protect life, prevent worsening, and promote recovery. Mm. My dad used to have this thing. He said, "You said you used to do five P's." He'd have the same first three, and then he'd say, "Pass the buck <laughs> and put the kettle on." <laughs> yeah, it's just like like it. I mean, yeah, he would give a, he'd get some response from the people on the course. Yeah, they'd kind of sort of laugh a little bit. It's, it, it, actually, you right? Yeah, you know, it's somebody who's had a first aid course. Even if you had a, a three or four day first aid at work course, mm-hmm. or even if you've done more advanced than that, yeah, at every step you want to try and pass those people on to the next best possible care they can get whether that yeah a paramedic has so much more training and it, an oh. emt an ambulance technician has so much more training than the average first aid a paramedic mm. has so much more training again yeah and they'll be working as a two or even a three sometimes and yeah they've got so much more kit they've got so much more training and the ability to use that kit under pressure and, and the time responding and yeah it's just like Particularly if something's really bad, having that ability to sort of pass things on, just like, whew. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's like, I mean, one of the worst things I've ever seen was a hemophiliac with a nosebleed. Mm. Yeah, that's, uh, it doesn't bear thinking about. I'm not even going to begin to describe it to, to, to folks. Um, no. Yeah, but yeah, it wouldn't luckily, be a good point to end on, would it? <laughs> no, no. Luckily, luckily, it was a situation actually. My, my 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 dad was around. Yeah, the level of training he had, and mm. yeah, we were uh, about two mile and a half, two miles from the nearest hospital. So yeah, there were there was a paramedic team with with us within five minutes, eight minutes. Um, luckily. That was a very long five to eight minutes. <laughs> really was. I'll bet. Um, but yeah. Ugh. Paul, <laughs> where could where could people find you? Where can people find <clears throat> you? Uh on most things. So I'm Brookswood Builds on TikTok, Facebook, Twitter. I'm Brookswood Build on Instagram because I can't get the S, <laughs> which is very frustrating. <laughs> um and then yeah, YouTube Brooks with builds as well. So any of those, I've got my Etsy shop as well, which is exactly the same. Um, so I'm trying to keep it con- consistent across the board, apart from that blimmin' S on Instagram. But that's a whole <laughs> another story. So yeah, is is the other person squatting on it, or are they? Uh, no, technically the other it? person's me. Uh, ah, okay. Because <laughs> this was when I lost my account a couple of years ago and went through all the rigmarole of trying to get it back. So, mm. yeah, we set the, and Sean, uh, from Sean in the Shed helped me set ones up, and I had Brookswood builds, and then it was cut off again, so now I'm just Brookswood build on that, which I'm hoping eventually I can have it, but I'd like yeah. just Brookswood, but someone sat on that, and they don't post, so, oh. ah. yeah. Frustrating. Mm, very. Very. Yeah. But yeah, no, I'm across... Everything I, I tend to post fairly re- frequently, frequently on most of the stuff. YouTube mm-hmm. I try and do once a month, but that doesn't always happen. <laughs> Entirely fair. Well, I would look forward to seeing some large anime weaponry soon. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. Plenty some of very it. interesting things I've got planned. So. Yeah, Sounds and exciting. to hopefully see some of it at Maker Central as well. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, so I'll, I'll be bringing a few things with me. I think. Nice, Paul. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here tonight. Yeah, I appreciate you having me, yeah. getting me back into the habit of being on a podcast. <laughs> Absolutely, it's been brilliant. Thank you very much, guys. Oh, thank you.
Uh, on that note, um, we'll say goodbye to folks and we'll see indeed. you next week with another guest. Hopefully. On Maker's Waffle. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.